Bulldog Unchained presents the one-on-one -on -one sessions. They will go one-on-one -on -one with the Great One. This is the Bulldog Unchained Podcast one-on-one -on -one session. This is uh, technically the first episode of this, past the introduction that I did, and I'm really excited for this. I'm I got a, I got a buddy in the studio with me that we've been friends for I don't know, a long time. Goddamn. Like, I, 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 I knew you guys before I even moved to Vegas in 2001. Well, that's cool. So, yeah. That's um, cool. But anyway... He is the lead guitarist for Blood Tribe. The only guitar player. That's true. Uh, <laughs> they don't need another one. Well, I'm just saying, he's yeah, guitar player, you know, whatever. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, help me in welcoming Mr. Tom Wilder. What's going on, brother? I'm doing okay. Thank you for having me on, sir. I'm, I'm stoked. Me like too. This, I, me too. When we talked about this on the phone, and I realized the potential for, uh, for stories from you, from, from <laughs> years of being on the Can road. Can I put trash in this? Yeah. All right. I'm trash. This this whole place is a dumpster. Just please put your trash in. Anywhere please. it doesn't matter. I don't want to be chomping into the. <laughs> so I, can... I mean, people hear me do this all the time. Well, that's all good. That's it. Yes. <laughs> Probably <laughs> sounds like I'm slurping a cock. Every that's, well, that's, that's coming in a little bit. <laughs> it's good. Comes in hot. We'll take in turns. So, all right. We're gonna get down. We're gonna get down to the. the you're hearing the TV. Okay, I was like, oh, there's some. I thought R. I thought R. Kelly came on or something. What's, what's gonna happen? Of course, I, I schedule this on on a weekday. Oh, that's all good. When when the roommate should be at work and there's no, not gonna be any distraction. Good, but bro. no, no, she, no, that shit doesn't happen like that. So whatever. I love it, dude. <laughs> Fucking great. When I get moved into the dungeon, it'll be way better. Hey, things, but things happen for a reason. So we've known each other for a long fucking time. Yeah. Now, tell me more about you. Like, where did you grow up? Are you from here? I am from, uh, yes. I was, uh, you want me to break it down? Yeah, me? man. Give it. I'm, I was, hit me with it. I was born in Deaconess Hospital, bro. Then, right the fuck on. Right here in Evansville. So we'll go back to the, the hatchling. Hit me with it, man. Give, give, uh, me, give me the story of young Tom Wilder. Then I, I'm not positive, but I think I... Grew up Southern Baptist. Well, I went to as in preschool, so I got yeah I got in trouble. <laughs> I got in trouble for like uh, I got paddled for running around naked when I was like four, three, because I didn't know how to get into school. Because this I, is my surprised face. No, that's <laughs> well, yeah, no shit. Yeah. I didn't know how I was watching this. This probably shouldn't start off like this, but because you know what age I was, but I was three or four. And uh, I was going to the bathroom, and uh, I was checking this little kid out. And, well, that sounds really bad. Uh, but you were a little kid. Yeah, also. I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah not yeah. current age. Yeah. So I was three or four, and you know we're both taking a squirt, and you know at the urinal, and I noticed he had his pants down to his to his ankles. So I thought oh, that's pretty cool. I never never thought about just pulling my pants all the way down. <laughs> so I pulled them all the way down and took them off, and I was like, you know, I'll just take them all the way off. Well, I couldn't figure out how to put them back on. So I, I'll just run through the, through the hallways of my dingus, flipping around. I got a bunch of shit over it. So yeah, I went to uh, uh, preschool there, and then I went to uh, Teacup on the west side. That's a far west side, by Burdett, not too far from Wrights. And Gripple West Sider went to high school, and yeah, dropped out when I was I don't know, twenty two maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not twenty two. Yeah, no. So you went to Wrights? Yes. Oh man, yeah, that explains so much. No, oh, many <laughs> many years. What school? I, I don't. What school did you go to? Because I, I grew up in Mount Carmel, oh. Illinois. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. So, so let, how old are you, Tom? Bro, we're gonna go there. We are gonna go there, son. I just um, I was born in the late seventies, <laughs> mid seventies, late seventies. <laughs> Are you, uh, what are you, about 42, 43? You could say now, that. No, you here's the thing. That. So we got to take a picture before. Oh, we'll take pi <laughs> we no, no, a picture. We got a picture. No, we're going we're gonna to take a picture together to put up on the page, Perfect, too. Perfect, dude. But uh, 
people, I, I, my fans who don't know who you are, they're they're not going to believe this. But, I mean, this you, you still look like you're twenty something. Most you, of the time. you don't. Like, I appreciate it, but you don't have to flatter me if you want to make out, dude. <laughs> we'll do it, bro. I appreciate it, man. Hey, I used to work out with you. I, I know that it doesn't take flattery. That's Just right. a couple flexing <laughs> poses yeah, and. That's right. You got me already. <laughs> Speaking of which, I need to get my fat ass back to the gym. We all do, bro. God. We all do. So, so you grew up here. Grew up, yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever lived anywhere else? Uh, Outside of Indiana, Indiana, that is a no. No. No, just kept it local. Huh? Around, yeah. Around the tri-state, I guess you'd say. I'm probably all. I think the furthest I've ventured, moving-wise, is Newburgh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Newburgh. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, Castle and Wrights are kind of comparable. Yeah, I know. You they, 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 talking, you they talk in. a lot of shit about the West Side. <laughs> no, there's... All a bunch of cake eaters oh, dude, in my some, world. Some, no, not all, but some people, man. And the water was way higher. Have you ever lived up there? In Newburgh? My water bill yeah. was like doubled. I, was yep. like, I know that's like first world problems, but it's just like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck? Dude, I, I called called him out twice <clears> to <throat> check underneath the house. No, that's fine, yeah. Two hundred dollar bill a month. I'm like, damn, motherfucker. For water, dude. Yeah, that's, it was, that's well, maybe one fifty, one seventy, but still, what the fuck for a month? I was like, no, and I don't take that many baths. You know, it's like, what's going on? <laughs> I am that guy that'll habitually do the same load of laundry several times and never change it over. My girlfriend constantly bitches me about it. Well, I wouldn't say constantly. Got to wash them again because you yeah. left them in there to get more. Well, if not, dude, you, know, you get that mildew. <laughs> yep. You pull it out and you're like, you put it on, you're at work, you're like, oh, oh. man, I smell like a turtle tank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm bad about that. So, at what age did you get your first guitar? <clears throat> um, well, I wanted, eventually, at first, I wanted to be a drummer. Really? Yeah. Uh, my parents for, forbidden pretty much for me to play drums. <laughs> well, my I would say my father didn't want me to play play drums. So I was I mean, watching. That's, a, uh, man, that's a man who likes his piece. Yeah, I get, yeah, no kidding. So I'm guessing it was around '86. So yeah, uh, I just dated myself there. I was young and I was watching uh, Live After Death, uh, uh, Maiden uh, VHS tape. Oh. And I was like, you know what? I, I kind of like guitar, you know, and then just, and I picked up guitar. Like, yeah, you know, it took me four or five years until I finally was like, I'll, I'll play guitar. So I was probably 16, but I can't even, I think I had a black Epiphone Gibson Strat model. And, uh, did you say Gibson Strat? It was with their model of a, of a Strat, you know, just a Strat body. Oh, okay. Gibson, Gibson Epiphone. I was like, no, 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 no. What? That was there. I got you. A cheaper you. one that, yeah, you know, I got picked out and, Took some lessons for a couple years, and he showed me some ACDC and Maiden songs and Metallica. And Who taught you how to play? I've had a couple of teachers. Um, I see the first guy's name was Chad Surgeon Sketter. Surgeon Sketter from he's from North Posey. This was at Mid City Music in '91, maybe. And uh, does it sound awful if I if I belch into this fucking? No, thing? man, let it fly. I'll at least uh, turn it away. <laughs> um. And then let's see. Then I started. Uh, I want to say my dad wanted me to learn classical. My dad, he, he he supported me somewhat, but he wasn't real. I guess real keen on all the metal and all the. I'd say this, <laughs> right. maybe the evil or the satanic albums. You know, seeing all the Slayer. I remember <laughs> being fifteen. He heard Angel of Death in the morning. I get ready. Why is this Angel of Death shit? And I was like, yeah, fuck, you know, fifteen. You know, but uh, so he wanted me to play classical guitar. So they bought me. Uh, a real good nylon string guitar and enrolled lessons for uh, Renato Baturis, which is like a great classical guitarist for, that was a professor at UE. But dude, I came there and he was a phenomenal guitar player, but I just wanted to learn some like Ying Vei phrases or something. I, dude, I was like 17. <laughs> right, like, man. What, what do I know, dude? I just, you know. I'm, I'm playing just, guitar trying to get laid, not to entertain you know, 70 learn. year old people. Yeah, like. so so he said, he, so he, for, he sits me down and he's like a world class guitar player. And, you know, I'm like a metalhead that knows just a bunch of Metallica and Slayer and Pantera. And so I'm playing on a nylon string guitar, which you're supposed to play with your fingers. Mm -hmm. And I'll play these Dunlop 2.0, thickest picks there is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm already, <laughs> they're like CD thick. He goes, so show me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> yep. And uh, so he's, well, you show me what you, what you like to play. And I started playing this 
the intro to Heresy by Pantera was all these harmonics that started yeah. playing this heavy rhythm. And he's like, that is that is good. But I I, I sound like Borat. And he was Italian. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he Almost said, the same yeah, thing. He says, I play guitar too to sed- seduce women. or And he just started, oh, God. I never seen anything like To have a it'd be between me and you and have some fucking virtuoso play. And, and, yeah. and you know, this guy, you know, I I can't read music. I'm not going to bullshit you. He was... Uh, to go from bar, you just put anything in front of him, and him just to shred over it. Why is he to read and to, yeah? You know, he's you can tell his eyes are translating everything as he's and, playing it. Yeah, That's, he want he wanted blows me to, my mind. He wanted me to. Uh, he said you you quit to you know you come to this camp in Ohio and for two months over the summer and you quit playing metal guitar and blah 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 and that was that was the last lesson with him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know I just wanted to learn something you know not not going to do amazing so, player but you know the funny thing is I. I haven't been able to uh, find it again. It was like I didn't see it on YouTube, but this was years ago, probably 2007 ish. I want to say okay. it was after he died, but there was a video of Dimebag playing finger style acoustic guitar. Oh, dude, he's, and I, and I, watched, I watched and I was like, holy shit. Oh, dude, like, he was ridiculous. Man. Yeah. And <laughs> it was just, like. I probably watched that video. I watched the 15, video 20 times. I watched a video of him uh, two days ago. I sent a couple of my friends and him just off tour, and he was just showing. He was in Dallas or Fort Worth, just showing his rig off and him playing songs and him being stupid and drunk and just shredding, making every guitar player around look like shit. And he's just <laughs> and he was a great dude, you know. Yeah, he got so and he got so many shit bags walking the world, you know. But you know, his who fucking knows. Dude? He's he, testing us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It uh, makes no sense, dude. World's fucked up. Yeah. It's funny. Then his you, fucking brother. I'm like, really? Dude. What the fuck, like, man? <laughs> Jesus. That's brutal, dude. The best it parts is. of Pantera, in my opinion, you know, yeah. are gone. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, Crazy. not to hate on Rex, but anybody oh, yeah, really could have filled in on base for I'm Pantera. Not, you know, I'm just saying. It's just like, you know, the part of that, you know, I can't, I don't know if Rex was the original. I was rocking Rex. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Inter- from the glam days, yes, man. Dude. Even Cowboys from Hell was glam Del- metal. Yeah. My like total glam. It's like, uh, yeah. It's like start- a lot of people don't remember that Pantera was a hair oh, metal band. Oh, dude, it's crazy. And the, and, like his name was Diamond Daryl. Diamond Daryl. And he Diamond wore Daryl. lipstick oh, yeah. and makeup and squeezed his big ass in the tight <laughs> leather <laughs> pants. He wasn't big at this. spandex and did he supposedly won that the guitar, his signature guitar? At, he won some, I want to say, Texas State champ, guitar championship. He was like 15. Really? And won a Brandle half st- uh, stack. The, the reason I play, the, the rig I do, is because of him. I was, I was going to bring that not up. Not the one. guitar. Not, you know, I don't know. I've I've never been in those guitars for some reason, those big, wonky fucking things, but the, the amp, yeah. One thing that's always stood out to me about your rig is that old, that's, that's done, road-worn, well-traveled Randall amp. Still got them. And bunch of them. I'm, I'm sure. I think I got six. Your sound, your sound is very much dependent on what Randall pumps out. Yeah, and that's true. I think I got <coughs> six heads, and I think one of them work. How gangster is that? I'm that guy, dude. Need to sell five of them or fix. Are four they tubes? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna say state. I think only two are tubed in the Regular other four solid. solid state. Yeah. I uh I just discovered the joys of tube amp last year. Oh, dude. Yeah. And I've got a Fender Super Champ X2 now, which I play mostly blues. That's cool. Like, it's funny, because you and I, we've known each other for a long time. I've I've been a singer in metal bands and all yeah. this. And, but when I play guitar, it's blues. That's like, all good. I can fucking, you can you sing and play guitar okay at the same time? I'm working on it. Like, I've never... That's, I think I've tried to, like... It's hard. It's fucking hard. Dude, I don't know how, like, Hetfield and Metallica... I mean... I don't know how my brother does, does it. it. Yeah. I was going to say, Jay's fucking ridiculous, Ask and him. Lindsay Williams, oh, and all dude. these. Guys. He gets with that looper I, and shit. It's yeah, stupid. but I mean, they they both they can play these beautiful fucking runs and fills, not just playing rhythm. They're yeah. fucking doing intricate shit while they're singing, and I'm like, dude, two my brain doesn't two, do that. Two different rhythms, you know. It's, I might be able to play a little bit of what you played, but my voice is gonna go. <laughs> I can't focus on what the fuck I'm singing, man. I can't do. It. Well, I can't sing, so I never tried, but. Yeah, it's. I'll try to just mess around doing something. I was like, I don't know how they do that. My, I'll start doing the singing right, and then my right hand rhythm would be off. I'm like, God, yeah, what the fuck? 
Yeah, so and then much, much proud. I, I watched a video the other day. Uh, this will this will blow maybe some other guitarist minds listening to this, but this guy was like he's sitting on stage and he's an instructor, like world class instructor. He's got this dude up there with him, and this guy plays pretty good. Okay. Okay. He tells him to play something for him, and he plays, and it's it's like it's pretty difficult. It's beautiful. But he's there because he's like he's having trouble like trying to improvise different things, and the instructor's watching him. And as soon as he stops, he goes, "Okay, now play the same thing, only don't actually play the strings." He was like, "I don't want to hear a sound come out of your guitar." He wants to play with his his. He wants him to move his fingers around the fretboard. But think about this: when you do hammer-ons and hammer-offs, like pull on pull, yeah you're going off of the sound your brain doesn't register the finger movements properly you feed off that sound and as soon as he started trying to do it he's like could do it he's pausing and you can t- see him looking at his fingers and he's looking at his right hand and the instructor goes your hands don't work together your brain has split your left and your right hand apart your left hand is interpreting for your right hand and your right hand is following suit that's bonkers. He fixed this dude's shit in like ten minutes on the stage. Well, he told him, but how does how does one correct that? So he said, I want you to play it again, but this time while you're playing, do not focus on your strumming hand. Focus on your left hand and the I fingering guess. and pay attention to the sustain of notes and the length of time that you leave your fingers fretted. If you find that again, send that to me. Jesus, I will. that's bonkers. It was dude. crazy, and then all of a sudden, you could just you could see in this dude's eyes the light bolt, like the lights flip the fuck on, dude. That's crazy. and it just registered, and I was like, I never even thought of such a thing. Holy shit! Right? Dude, that makes us like, dude. It's, you know, playing music, you know, and guitars, a lot of things is hard enough. Now I got to worry about my left and my right. And that's just, <laughs> like it. I had never even thought of that, you know, because I have tr- like me. You 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 play really fast, eh. for the most part. Like you're try to you you guys are what like you thrash? Would you call it thrash core? Yeah, we've like, heard a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, it's metal, man. Yeah. It's fucking metal, dude. We call it meth metal. We've we've but, been coined. <laughs> we've that's what we call it. We call it. We've been coined black and thrash, which I don't really hear a lot of black metal. No. And to be honest, no. uh, we a lot, of, a lot of people say death metal. And a lot of it's because of the vocalist. death metal you know? has more chugging in it. True. And you don't really do that. Like, if people listen to Blood Tribe, which, by the way, I'm going to put one of your songs, I'm going to cool. put Ritual cool. at the end of this once Appreciate we're it. done talking so people can get a taste of that. Get a taste. But, and it, it's not for everyone. I love it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get into it. We make, I mean, we're we, going to get into Blood Hopefully Tribe people here. dig it, but, you know, we just get in a room, basically, and whatever comes yeah. out. You know, you've been many bands. I'm, we get in a room, whatever comes out, we're not like, oh, dude, that's all the people. Okay, now we need to revamp no, this. Let's reinvent. No, man. To, us, it's, <clears throat> to me, at least, it's art. You know what I mean? Every, I mean, every good is. band, every good singer will tell you if a song took more than 15 minutes to write, it's probably shit. A lot of times. Like it's, <laughs> some don't come on, but if something flies out, you know. Like, uh, uh, I remember a big one was uh, Guns N' Roses. Which Act, one? Act, <laughs> which which song? Uh, Sweet Child of Mine. They wrote that was one quick? Written in like eight minutes. Wow. He said, Slash started playing that fucking riff, and I sat down. Within ten minutes later, the song's Dude, done. Sometimes it... And then I'll, I looked at him and was like, you know, you gotta throw a sick solo in there. And he was like, well, yeah. And Dude, that's that. <laughs> He's, I don't know what it's about Slash, but he he's the master Sla- of, of having certain runs like the end of November Rain that are just oh my he, even in and for him to do that is nothing. Slash to me was our first. Slash was the universe's first gift since Jimi Hendrix. I can't really argue that you know that's pretty pretty close. Well, it's kind of a close toss up between he and Prince. Oh God, yeah. Because Prince I forgot about Prince, dude. Dude, Prince, yeah, don't get me started. Prince on that is ridiculous. Guy. Like he yeah. was another guy gone way too. Oh, fucking, dude. yeah. But Amazing. You, you got fucking you got musician. Prince. You got Slash. Then Dimebag comes along, and not only can he shred, but and he can you write, li- dude. Listen, he can write. and his riffs. 
Not a lot of you, guitar players can do that. Not even the riffs. He could come up with riffs fucking around. Just whatever. Yeah, yeah. He could fuck around for 30 minutes and you got four albums worth of riffs was, right there was, if somebody's recording. But just not even just the heavy that solo on Cemetery Gates. Oh, dude. Oh, that was, I, I think it was the God. first song I ever heard by them. Me too. And I so heard I that like, before right. I heard Cowboys from Hell, and I was like, who is this? Yeah, okay. And then my buddy had the Cowboys from Hell album, so he's just like, oh, you never heard Pantera? So he just, yeah. it, the, we're talking cassette tape, yeah, and he rewinds like it that. to the beginning, and that oh, was yeah. it for me, yeah. boy. I was done. I was, I was, as soon as I heard, I was like, well, this I, is I new. thought Pantera was great, and the guitar tone was crazy on Cemetery Gates. But <laughs> then I, I like you know, checked it out for about I don't know six months. Then after that, uh, Fulgur Display of Power came out. And yep. Mouth for War and Headbangers Ball. I was like, oh shit. <clears throat> well, even off of that Cowboys from Hell album, when I heard um, Psycho Holiday. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> what is that? Who comes up with that? I guess. I guess Vinny had that beat at first, and he just, I don't know, dude. Yeah, and then, and yeah, and Dime was like, oh, I can play guitar to that beat. Like, <laughs> it's like, wow. It's like blues and I like metal it. and thrash. I liken the first few albums from Pantera to, this is what happens if a bunch of redneck truckers decided to stop driving trucks, and they got instruments, and were like, we're going to make metal. Yeah, good metal. Like, we got whiskey, and we got instruments. Yeah. Now let's get the women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really Dude, sounds like that, dirty Vin, trucker Vin, metal. Uh, he owns that uh, that titty bar in uh, Dallas, the clubhouse, and I guess yeah. it's closing. I think uh, I guess Saturday or something. It's gonna be done. It's crazy. I mean, if you, what the fuck is happening out there? I don't know, dude. It's fucking <laughs> rape. Oh, I don't know. Party I time. Have no clue. But uh, yeah, man, like. I mean, I always knew that Pantera was a big influence for you. Oh fuck yeah! Uh, Hopefully for a lot of bands, a lot of people, a lot of people like now. There's some of the newer guys who they're like, "I'm so dude, he's fucking overrated, man." What I don't he doesn't play eight string guitar. Yeah, what what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, if you need eight strings to do what he accomplished with six, you need to reevaluate your playing. <laughs> Because look, look, there are times where a seven or eight string oh, yeah. will give you a little bit extra something. There's some great players, but that, some of my favorite heavy the music is, is on that. But dime bag would just be like, why do I need eight strings? I got twenty six frets. <laughs> exactly. Like, look at this. I'm down here at the it's, fucking bridge you know, or at the neck pickup, and I love uh, I love a lot of the, the heavier bands that tune really low that use seven eights and some use nines. But uh, I'm pretty sure those guitar players that are playing it won't take a complete shit on Dimebag. I mean, no. that's just, just but you know, maybe to their own. But dude, why are there on. so many goddamn subgenres of metal now? Yeah, like, what? Up. When did metal become like, like post hardcore and all? Yeah, that? no, dude. Well, look, if you're playing metal, I don't care if you've got somebody singing opera like fucking Dream yeah, Theater. It's still metal. Yeah. It's, metal it, con- and, consists and, of the music and quit hating on each other man it's oh like aggressive God. aggressive music the latest that's what the, killed, elite, the elitist bullshit that's man. what that's what pissed on our local music scene here all these goddamn bands remember when I put together the hostile takeover 812 shows oh yeah my whole purpose was to build a council and, and out of the bands I remember and and get all of these bands on a united front because Original bands can only help each other. That's true. If you're a cover band, I get trash in another cover band, yeah. but at the end of the day, you're a cover band, and I've been in them, Yeah. but it's weekend warrior shit. Yeah. But original bands, why the fuck would you ever Dude, I, dog shit I, I on another it. original? Like, Especially if they're local. Like, I understand if you yeah. guys get into personal beef or something. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But just because... We're all in Evansville, bro, playing metal, you know? <laughs> right. You know, if everybody like nobody gets a, better than anybody. Yeah, <laughs> if you know if everybody gets along and at least it's cordial and shit, you know, everybody promotes. You know, it's a lot better. But you got you know, if there is bands that are hating on each other, well, fuck them. I'm not showing them. I do that. Just yeah, really oh, count, I, well, counterproductive. We don't we don't want to play shows with them. Shut the fuck you up, man! Their, You're being offered a stage. Do when I first and play, money and look at it <laughs> and look at it now. It's done. Wait, there's it, no we, we went dwindled down to being just PG, and now it's not fucking PG. has gone. Well, I mean, Awful. that the shows that I put together, 
fuck, dude, there were two, three hundred people crammed into that Remember goddamn that movie, room. Movie, that movie place that you do sound for? You'd help. That's you what I'm saying. Shows? Oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was ran that, the like hostel. Eight, well, the there hostel was, eight, there one, was two. a bunch of clubs, man. Yeah, I did the hostel takeover there, mm-hmm. and and made sure that the bands had guaranteed money. You got paid, and people wanted to act like prima donnas. Be like, Damn. well, we either need a percentage of the alcohol sales or the door. I'm like. Then go play the fucking duck in and see how many people show up. Yeah. I've literally built you a crowd yeah. that's going to be pre-installed aside from the people you bring, and I've got you guaranteed money if twenty people show up. True. And very, people very seldom in town. Shit on it, and I'm like, all you're gonna do because I have to relay that to, to the, the owner. owner when you don't want to play anymore. And finally, he was just like, like, "Fuck it, shut it down." Yeah. And I was like, "God damn, man." Yeah. All that work I put in for months on that. Do you know how much I got paid probably, for that, like, seven months of work? Probably not a lot. Bro. I made just under $500. Yeah, it's more than I For thought, seven man. months of work. Seven months, wow. And that was all, aside from having a regular job, I put in, you remember, the phone calls mm-hmm. and the messages through MySpace and emails. MySpace. And, dude, Jesus. I fucking hustled my ass off to make that happen. and well, It was appreciated. <laughs> and look at it look at it now for the most part I, I felt that it was but man all it took was uh, two or three just shitty attitude bands and it it was done and then I, sour- I even said I was like well good luck wherever you're gonna play now yeah <laughs> because there was options there you know some options you know but you know some people would be like oh yeah I don't want to trash certain club owners but now there's there's docs but they haven't had a uh, original band. The new owners there. I don't think they're. From what I hear, it's going to be more of a sports bar. But yeah, it is. I, I know the owner there, Josh. And, uh, He's uh, a good dude, but I just don't think music is the avenue for them. It's a good stage. It dude. is. It's a great stage. It's a good stage. I <clears throat> I need to have a sit down, with KC. I think he. We had a. We did had. He a, have. He had certain bands on Thursdays, but I think they were cover bands. Though. We. That's mostly what he has is cover bands. We had a conversation a couple of years ago. Oh, he said ago. some nationals. I know right, 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 right. But we had a conversation a couple of years ago, and I think we need to revisit it to, uh, you know, s- s- Saturday he, or something. He knew what I, like, what I was capable of doing that, okay, I've got plenty of local bands here to play support, and I have access to... To a lot of nationally touring bands. We're not talking big fucking arena fillers and shit. We're talking the local club touring bands, post hardcore bands, you know, different metal bands, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I explained to him. Money's money. I explained to him, I was like, you are the closest thing that we have to a Pops. You're not as big as Pops. That's true. But KC's Time Out Lounge could very easily be a mid level band. Some people, we've been fired from some bars because certain regulars, oh, they're too loud, they're too heavy. I, I, I know he's a smart man. I just hope he'd be like, well, they might run my 100, 100 regulars that are here on a Wednesday or Thursday. Well, tell him you know? not to come here on Wednesday. <laughs> well, I guess he's got to see some return off the other I side. I mean, of right. But what I tried, what I explained to him, I was like, Casey, when I see that bands that I love are playing in Louisville, yeah, Nashville, all around, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Chicago in, in the middle of all of it man. yeah and, and right it can be middle. a Wednesday or Thursday night man and if that's my chance to see them that's I go and guess what when I go to these shows I see a lot of the same fucking people I'll see people in Louisville that I see at the shows hey. in St. Louis we we don't know each other's names but we recognize exactly. each other because we've been to fucking 50 fucking shows together yeah and it's one of those like people will travel to see bands that yeah. they want and the thing is they could play in St. Louis on a Tuesday and play here on a Wednesday, Wednesday. or a Thursday. On the way to Louisville or Cincinnati. And the or, people that went to see them in St. Louis, we'll, we'll half follow. of them are going to follow here yep. and come see them in Evansville. And he was like, you really think so? And I was like, I do it. And mm-hmm. I see these same people at these shows. Like, I'm getting ready to have to go see... Uh, I'm going next... This coming Friday... Well, not tomorrow, but the next Friday. I'm going to Indianapolis on my 40th birthday to see Clutch for my 20th time. Jesus. I think I've seen him once or twice. I saw him here with Pantera. My, my favorite. Yep, I was at that show. Yeah. Uh, that was Pantera, Clutch, and Neurosis. Neurosis. And Neurosis, dude. They're do, two dudes that they had doing the, the drums. drums. Oh, my God. It yeah. still stands out in my yeah. mind. I'll tell everybody about it. But What year was that? 97? Trend Kill Tour? 96, 97. Yeah, it had to be. It, 
Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. I remember I moved. That was about the time that our good concerts started dwindling. Mm -hmm. I remember the turnout for that was dog shit. I remember. Yeah, there was there was maybe. Did you go this? Did you last that? Did you go to that Judas Priest Steel Panther show? That was here a couple years ago. No, I wanted to and I couldn't. I think there was barely a thousand people in that Ford. Ford. Crazy. It was gross. I was ready to vomit, dude. It was. I felt so bad. You know, Judas Priest is a great band, and so many people have. But at the same time, by them. At the same time, for whatever reason. That's what happens here. We can't get bands at their peak. Well, we can't get them at their height. If it ain't country for that's whatever what I was reason, say. that shit'll sell think, out for yeah. fucking thirty minutes. But, you know? but the thing is, all these people, the people that do the booking here for Evansville, they think that it's gonna fucking oh well, we're gonna bring. You, look, I'm not trying to trash these guys. I love their music and whatnot, but I love Breaking Benjamin. I'm. Dude, I, I, I dig, I'll, I'll I admit it. it. I've I've seen I, them every time they came here. I dig it. Every but time. at the same time. Breaking Ben is past the prime. Like they and Godsmack, who I don't it's like I'm not gonna I'm not trying to dog but I don't give a fuck about Godsmack. I got you. You're not you're not getting me erect enough to leave the house <laughs> to to come to the Ford Center to see the show. <clears throat> what happened? Did you to notice them? that? It's what? like so it's like a rotation. It's like the Volbeat will come. And it is, dude. It's Volbeat will come and with uh, and Godsmack and uh, what's who we were just talking about that was coming. Breaking Benjamin. Breaking Benjamin. You yeah. know they were here last year. The Venge Seven Fall. They pretty much come here every year. It's like it's like a yearly stop. And, and Five Finger Death Punch will come here. You know. Yeah, I know. Don't want to. Yeah, but uh, it's like friends you can pull. Don't you can, friends but I don't guess let friends listen you know, to Five Finger Death Punch. You know what sucks is it's it's you know what the first album I was like oh that's great that you know Jeremy Heidi comes from Boonville and blah blah blah. And he just recently left, but it's like, I think it's it's like just like Volbeat, you know. I'd hate to, I, I can't stand the, the fucking vocals, man. Dude from Volbeat, I don't give it. When I first I heard shit. Volbeat, I was listening to them in 2010. Okay, they had two albums. What's he talking about? A Danish warrior? So what the fuck? Were yeah. they? What the fuck well, is I mean, he talking about? You talking about he, Viking shit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, but. Okay, have you listened to their first two albums? Hell no. You, I cannot you, stand that on. fucking guy's You vocals, need to go back bro. and listen to the like listen to Hallelujah Goat. Hallelujah oh, Goat. Oh man. Like they were I don't understand what happened. Were they heavier? The, oh my god. I don't understand what happened with the shift that now they're yeah, selling albums. I, I guess. guess yeah, poppy and fan friendly. But Hallelujah Goat is just a pure blasphemous song and Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Really? Uh, the Lord above has never been on my side, your side, hallelujah, goat. Dude, it's... if I just can't get past his fucking vocals, dude. Man, I, I liked it, and I'm sure everybody says the same thing about every fucking band I listen well, to, but I guess it's the way I, I listened, like, I enjoyed it then, but then it just sounded the same over gotcha. and over. I'll check it out. And then <clears throat> they dude, had one... Dude, I... I saw them. Sorry, Tim, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, they had another song that really hooked me called, well, two songs. They had Guitar Gangsters and Cadillac Blood. And that was just, it was, you hear it. Okay. And it's, you're just like, where the fuck is that Volbeat? That's the Volbeat I would have gone to see. Same vocalist? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they had one called Sad Man Tongue. And he straight up, in the beginning, it's an acoustic guitar and you hear a steel slide guitar. And he is straight up singing like Johnny Cash. And then all of a sudden that shit kicks in. Wah! Then all of a sudden it's Volby and he's just going after it. But it's heavier, it's faster. And it was like, I wanted to see those guys. They didn't come over here until three or four years later after the fucking call of the warrior and oh, all that God, bullshit dude. came out. Dude, I, just, I can't do it. Dude. And I was and done pro- with props them to by him, then. Props to him. They play in front of thousands all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was done with them by then. Man, I was like, fuck this. Shit. And the thing, it's one of those, you know how you try to introduce people to music? Oh, yeah. I was sharing that shit all over Facebook in 2010 trying to get people to listen and pay attention. I was like, oh my God, everybody needs to check these guys out. They're fucking badass. And then four years later, I'm getting sent these things from people. Have you heard this band? And I was like, yeah, four years ago when they were fucking good. <laughs> now, like, this is dog shit. You missed the boat, buddy. Dude, look, let me t- tell you a story. I hate to, you know, but just, I don't know. I'm going to tell you anyway. Tell me. So, Volbeat opened for, uh, sorry, I'm not going to lie. I, I fucking 
Metallica's do their first tour of Hardwired around, I would say, 16 or 17, and they're going to St. Louis at uh, uh, the Bush Stadium. And uh, on the tour, was it was Gojira for a while. Oh, dude, don't get a fluff. Oh. What a fucking great band, dude. <laughs> yeah. One of the most underrated bands, in my opinion. But <laughs> yes. So fucking good. But anyway, um, so I have still have not seen Gojira yet. And I, I do like Avenged Sevenfold. I think he's a good guitar player, good songwriters. And have you ever seen them live? Gojira? No, uh, Avenged Sevenfold. I'm not a fan. I, Dude, they're pretty I fucking liked, good. I liked A7X before oh, I gotcha. he fucked his voice up. Yeah. And then when he had to have that throat surgery or whatever, yeah. and he came back, my immediate reaction was, I hate to say it, but they should have parted ways with him. Wow, that's and pretty strong. I, it, I know it's harsh. But you had a reputation to live up to. And listen to Avenged Sevenfold on the radio now. Listen to what you hear. Go back and listen to the original and then listen to what you get now. It is poppy bubblegum bullshit. It really is. The guitar work sounds poppy bubblegum bullshit now. How the fuck? That dude's bad as fuck When I first heard, like, everybody got amped up and they were like, oh my God, A7X is hard again. And... Everybody was pimping that fucking uh, Your Fucking Nightmare song. Yeah. And the first time I heard it, I listened to about 30 seconds and I was like, nope. Like, I clicked. <laughs> I was like, nope. I, I did, I, not my A7X. Yeah, I understand. I see what you're saying. Uh, I, I like them. And, uh, but it was so Metallica was bringing certain bands out. Well, of course. Cool. That's. And, and so, yeah. Vol, but, but, uh, Volbeat had the leg of St. Louis. So my friend, uh, the dude I was with, and a couple people I knew were going, dude, full beats going on, bro. Dude, I stayed outside the fucking venue and watched the fucking Cubs Cardinals game until that shit was over. Well, you said this was 2016 or 17. Yeah, yeah, they had yeah, the fucking. So. By had then, a, suppose they had the yeah. boxing ring around the goddamn dude. I was ready to <laughs> blow my brains out. Anyway, so then, <laughs> then I think a year later, Volbeat comes with, and here it was Anthrax. <clears throat> I can't remember. It was Anthrax and someone else in Volbeat was headlining. And I, I went to go see Anthrax. Love the old school thrash. It was yeah. Fucking stellar, dude. Hearing those triggers in a, in a stadium. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So anyway, um, me and my buddies leaving as Anthrax is done. Because I'm telling you, I, the vocals, I can't can't do it. I've probably been to five Volbeat shows and had not seen them with my own eyes. So, uh, so and I'm like, uh, I'd probably be the same way now. Like, Dude, I'd be like, no. Nope, a couple I, of my buddies said, do "Dude, it. Dom, where are you at, man? Volbeat's going to go on." I was going down the escalator. You getting some merch? Said, "No, bro, I'm <laughs> fucking leaving." What? I said, "Have a good time, dude." I just, man, that vocals don't don't do it for me. But hey, they're they're doing killer. I so mean, good for them. Yeah. Props to them. And I, just not. I'll give bag. them this. They do have a unique sound. They do. <laughs> so is, <clears throat> so is Yoko Ono right. on, her, on her fucking. Uh, did you ever see, see that the newest thing she did with that dude? She goes, ah, ah. oh yes. my god, it's tough to watch. But I keep yeah. on watching it. Why is that? If something, someone shit smells real bad, it's like, I gotta smell that again. <laughs> well, it's like called? if someone tells you that you fart, oh, you don't oh, walk yeah, away. Bro. You gotta smell I'm, it. What is that? There's gotta be a term for that. It, I don't know. It's. I think that's part of the reptilian brain in us. I, I really do. I think that it's it fucking. Might it's be. a pro, like it's a primal fucking back to when oh. we were still. Crawling on our, on our bellies, just coming out Fuck, of the out man. of the water, and oh, what are these new smells? I can't believe they're bringing uh, Manson back here, <clears throat> zombie. I so, can't believe that. Manson and Rob Zombie are coming here. That's I, I, I'm gonna go, man. I'm, I like them both. I want to go. You need to go. I, I know. Be the only metal show. What's funny is five years. Here. So I've seen Clutch. This I will be my twentieth Clutch show. Where's it at? In Indianapolis at the Marat. I th oh, no, fuck. yeah, the Marat. Wow. Yeah. I love them, Rob. Uh, the Egyptian, the Egyptian room, or I think so. I think that's no, no chairs. Oh yeah, no, fuck uh, no. Yeah, I'm not. Room. I will never go to a concert again if they have seating. I've been to three. I've been to over six hundred concerts in my life. Jesus. And one that I enjoyed that had seating was when I went to see Rod fucking Stewart. I'm gonna tell nice. you right Here now. Here in town. Yes. Heard he's pretty good, dude. I don't care what anybody thinks that could be listening to this. If you don't think that Rod Stewart is one of the greatest vocalists. Oh, he can sing. That, oh, my God. He can sing his and, ass off. and not only that, but when I saw him, the motherfucker was already like 50-something, 60. Yeah, he's probably 70 now. he got to be. And he had more energy than anyone I've ever seen. Second to Steven Tyler. 
That's impressive. Like, I've seen Aerosmith, and dude, Steven Tyler is nuts. Yeah. Like, that dude runs and jumps off of the fucking Fuck, speakers. I think he's almost 72. <clears throat> yeah. But Rod Stewart's kicking soccer balls out into yeah, the crowd and his, shit. That was his gig. Yeah. That. And he was just entertaining as fuck. And I actually went to that concert skeptical, like, oh, this is going to suck. Uh, but I had I got I got a free ticket. Like I was invited to go. I'm like, okay, I'll go. Enjoyed the fuck out of myself, man. Dude, it was fantastic. You never, you never know, dude. You never. Know. And that's when I lived in Vegas, going to all those concerts. You know, I basically had free tickets to most of these shows, so I went. Even if it was somebody I'd never heard of, I went. And if the headliner didn't catch me, one of the supporting acts was probably going to. Yeah. And that's why I feel I have such a. When I introduce people to music. Like they'll ask to go through my playlist or like my MP3 collection, okay. and I'm like, that could be so. You varied. better, you better have weeks to pilfer through this shit because you're. Not. And they'll they're like, okay, well, if I give you a, a flash drive, will you put some shit on here for me? I'm like, I sure will. Uh. And dude, I will throw in things like there. I'll throw in things like Forty Below Summer. I don't know wow. if you've ever heard of Road Runner Band. Fuck yeah, man! I love those Around guys. Two thousand. Yep. It was 2001 when what I lived in Vegas. What happened to them? Uh, they split up. That dude got it. The lead singer got into another band called Black Market Hero. Don't think I'm the And uh, it, they were they were cool too. Gotcha. Just I don't understand how that dude's voice did not catch. Like he was unique as fuck. Usually that's and, what takes off, you know. If the yeah, man. Like you know. holy shit. You like, like ten years at all? <clears throat> I know Jesse and all. I was gonna those say dudes, that man. dude's voice, dude. It's Jesse fuck. is. Was it and Matt Watlin was the other vocalist? Dude, they're both are Dude, voices. I met them. Be, okay, so I've known Seven Dust for years. Mm -hmm. Like I, I fucking love him. that. I fucking love that band. Yep, great band. And because of them, like when they went on tour, this was in two thousand six. When they went on tour again here, we went up to the Marat Theater to go check them out and out to St. Louis. And they had two bands, Boba Flex and Ten Years, with them. I like Boba Flex a lot. And too. that's how I became friends another, with Boba Flex. Another grossly underrated band, in my opinion. I don't. I I still love them. I don't like their new stuff now as much yeah, as yeah. some you know, it's hit, hit and miss. You know. Yeah. Did you now did you, bury me with my guns on? Yeah, if, some of the older school. Also, they changed their look drastically. Yeah. They really did. Yeah. Which I get what they're doing. They have appealed to a much larger. Yes crowd now having a, a, a syncopatic look to yes. themselves like they all look like they belong together instead of these guys should not be on stage together like, Were you, <laughs> would you see them in jasper when they came here i wanted to so but i was like they're playing at the fucking holiday inn did what you, the fuck did you know it was us and another rap metal band that opened that open that thing oh. a cover band opened what a death metal play, death metal band played then uh a rap metal band played out of St. Louis. And Bubba what Flex. were they called? Shatter Mask. I love those kids. AK. Yeah. We got the thing. AK. Yeah. Go flip. Step back. So I, I got, knew as soon as you said yeah. rap metal from St. Louis, I was like, it's got to be Shatter I'm Mask. I'm telling you, dude, the, I'm telling you, there might have been 15 people there. Yeah. And it was probably a hell of a show for them. Oh, well, they, they fucking ripped it. You yeah. Know, it was great. I was a fan since I saw them live. And uh, I was like, you know, "There's really, you know, I started following since then. Like, Dude, we're, we're on the road. There's a certain certain songs we listen to by then." I lot. saw, I saw Shatter Mask. Actually, I think Shatter Mask opened for Boba Flex and Ten Years after the Seven Dust tour. Boba wow. Flex and Ten Years went on tour together again, and Shatter Mask opened for them at Pops in St. Nice. Louis. So that's nice. probably why they were on the bill with them here. Cool. And uh, yeah, Jasper, yeah, yeah. And I saw, do like, you know, a lot of people when you think rap metal. Instantly, the the image of Lincoln well, Park. Yeah, yeah, around. yeah. No, that dude nope. was bad. That oh, dude yeah. was bad. He's fucking vicious, man. Like, he was doing flips and shit. He was, yep. he's, he's bad, dude. I yeah. Can't, I, don't, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know. I, I have no I guess I heard that he left, and I guess if he had left, he might as well. Oh, that there. band's done. Yeah, you're not going to. I don't remember anything about that band other than <laughs> him. Like, you had a black dude with dreads who was harder and heavier than the rest yeah. of the band it's like his dope. vocals were harder than their guitar yeah that's crazy he's talented dude anybody listening to this if you get on youtube and you look up shatter mask ak i promise when you hear this song you're gonna be like rest. holy shit yeah that's cool <laughs> stuff a lot of good bands out of st louis that's so funny you've seen them man oh yeah like played, played, played in mattel city Huntingburg, jasper we did all these smaller 
<laughs> Tell yes. City? Tell City with him. With who? Uh, Shatter Max. Really? Yeah. Is that, uh... What Me- the fuck? Mex, um... That was, yeah. uh, that was, what, 2014-ish? 13? No, it was before that. It, yeah, it was, actually. It was before but that. Fuck, that would have been about 2008 or nine. I'm trying to remember. I remember the songs that we were playing, and it was in between after Ryan or Woolsey. So it's between, yeah, we're getting ready to get into some blood. It's between 08 here. and 12, and it was at a Mexican restaurant <laughs> in Tell <laughs> City, fucking awesome. but it has a bar next. God next damn to it. it! And it was dope. Place was packed. You know what's place funny packed. is uh, Tell City. God damn it! One of the places that I used to go to in St. Louis. Uh, it, they had uh they had basically what I was trying to start here with hostile takeover uh meet they had a like they had a group out not a band but a uh kind of a manage not even a management like the booking thing to get the bands together it was like meat grinder productions or yes, something. I've heard, chunks yeah. of meat we done we done a couple of shows it? Through, chunks of meat we done a couple of shows through them it just builds <clears throat> in St. Yeah. Charles or St. And they played at a barbecue house nice and I was just like I used to go to a couple shows there, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, it's smaller and it's kind of shitty sound, but man, everybody here is here for the same fucking reason. Like, like that's I miss eleven chunks of oh, dude, chunks geez. of meat production eleven twenty three. Good memory. Into, oh my god, a lot of great bands came through there. Oh, dude. As, as only dying played that played that yeah. dude. Uh, Asking Alexandria came here to play what Boney uh, Junes yeah, yeah. back before, like when they yeah. were first. Yeah, and I mean, I, like, I loved their first, like that first. I never, I never, I don't think I ever heard it. It was. I mostly, seen it live a couple of times with Whitechapel and Slipknot on the dude, some of the Mayhem White tours. Chapel. Oh, Are you rocking it? Yeah, yeah. I fucking. I fucking love them. Yup. They're catching a lot of shit because they, they got some uh, cleaner vocals and shit. But I don't give a shit. They're a good fucking band. Man, you know me. I've always been fascinated by those that can sing and yeah, yeah, scream. Yeah, yeah. And but some people are like, if you're, if you're guttural for so many years. But he's it's not like they just automatically change. He's been doing a lot of that, you know. But you know, if the label, you know, people change. People grow. People, you know, if he wants to sing and try to say... Well, look, look at Asking Alexandria, Danny Warstop. Now, one of those dudes, I don't know which one, but I saw one of them live, and I was really blown away how way, how good how, how good his voice was. I don't know if, who was the one that had the big that went into rehab? That like on stage, he kept on getting drunk, and that would be Danny, the yeah. original is he, lead singer. Is he, didn't he come back or someone come? No, back or he something? left. He oh, ended God. up leaving, and now he has a band. I think he still has a band called We Are Harlot. But he That's wanted to cool. do, do more of that eighties nineties. Like hard rock vocals, really. That's why their last album with him from Death to Destiny is more along those lines. Like there's still some heavy shit, yeah, yeah. but he did like the road and moving on. And the it road sound- that, that song was, I, I, I was like, I want to check it out. I was like, wow, it's actually pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah. Was it them that was, did that Ultimate Warrior thing? I don't know about this. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? You haven't seen the Ultimate Warrior workouts where he takes I see stars and acts like asking Alexander. No. Oh my God. The fucking wrestling. Dude. You're going to have to see when you're, this. Dude, when you're, I'll do it right now. <laughs> dude, he's, I want, I think it's, is Dan, yeah, Danny's one of the names, right? The Danny Warsnop was he the says, original singer of basketball. Dude, Alexander. he puts him, he, you know, I'm sure it's all scripted except the workout. He gets him up off the tour bus, or I think when it was in a van. And he says, uh, he says, heavy metal, put on another fucking chain. This is metal, Danny. So, is saw, it the Ultimate Warrior? Yes. Oh my God! He's, I saw him. I can't what? believe you've seen it. What? You just said what? you turn that gun to a fucking eight pack and become a god, dude. It's so intense, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, but Jim I know. Elwig, I know. It's, there's intense. only there's only two episodes. One is definitely I see stars, and I think the other one is. I'm almost positive it's asking Alexandria, but it, or it's the same thing, dude. I cannot believe you haven't seen it. Oh my God! You've got to send me that heavy metal. Oh, dude. <laughs> And he's fucking intense. Oh, oh yeah. my god! Dude. Well, you got to realize when he was doing human growth hormone back in the eighties and nineties, he was also doing a lot of cocaine. Well, well, well yeah, but dude, this is you know, so this is maybe Older five, boy. six, seven, yeah. eight years ago before he passed away. Yeah, dude, I but he, he looked still, like he was great. always an intense guy. Oh, dude, he didn't. There was no fucking let up, dude. <clears throat> he kicked there all the girlfriends groupies with him. He kicked them all out. The fuck out of here. <laughs> 
Heavy metal, here's another fucking chain, Danny. <laughs> I've got a fucking Oh, dude, this. I can't believe you haven't seen it. I that. can't believe I haven't either. Oh, I'm yeah. a huge fan of the Ultimate Warrior, and, and I was a pretty good fan I of Asking Alexandria. Like, if I'm wrong about it, but it's, I think it's them, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he goes fucking crazy. Oh, and one of them, when he comes to the workout, I think Danny was drinking, had a bottle of wine, and he goes ape <laughs> shit, about dude. right. He goes ape shit, dude. All right. Anyway. So, now, so, we're going to rewind here. So, so you're, you're oh, 16, yeah. 17, getting into your metal. Fucking, yes, yes, yes. Just really. Learning, learning how to play guitar. Right, right. So, what was your first band? What was the first band that you were a part of? That's a good question. There's been too many, right? Well, there hadn't been a whole lot. Well, You've just been in this for well, so goddamn long. Well, it's, yeah, but this uh, is half your fucking life that we're getting ready to get into. That's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, that's fucking nuts. Um, wow, well, you're a snare. I know. We right? <laughs> got a marching band. <laughs> um. Let's see. I want to say I fart. I fart. I farted. I first started. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, drunk. <laughs> I'm gonna say 92 or so. I I can't remember. You know, it's like some cheese. We had a couple bands with some fucking awful names. You know, we thought they're great at first, but we played a couple of Pantera covers, a couple of originals, <clears throat> that sounded really fucking lame, in my opinion. Um, well, dude, the first original yeah. that anyone writes. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, I'm just you know, being, being being honest. You know. Uh, then I see. Then I hooked up with another cat who was a fucking uh, a straight uh, Slayer freak, and we started playing like tons of Slayer covers. So it was it was basically a a Slayer, Metallica, Pantera, Sepultura band, and then we started writing some originals that sounded like Slayer and Sepultura. You know, figured out that wasn't very good. Then uh, yeah, that split up or morphed into I got hired into. Uh, 1369 around now we're into 1995 god damn really yeah i think that's when the first not first but the there's it started in florida it started in florida yeah it used it was like i know i knew a little bit of the history of 1369 well blood tribe slash 1369 slash it was called something else before 1369 and I actually used to know the significance of 1369, and I can't... I've heard different stories, dude. So I well, like the I story that I got came from my brother Jay that came directly from What's-His-Nuts that which, which basically name? founded 1369. So I can't even remember Randy his name. Randy or Carlos? Randy. That's gotcha. it. Yeah, and Randy told him He's, what it was, and he Ra- told me. Randy hired, hired me, and what... What is it that Randy, I can't even fucking remember, dude, man. I've heard it's Mary Malone's crypt number. I've heard <coughs> fucking he fucking I, knows, dude. I, and I remember an interview. One of the guys said, he said, "What is thirteen sixty nine mean?" Well, there's thirteen, and everybody likes sixty nine. I'm like, God, dude, how <laughs> fucking in, how, yeah, how fucking inbred can you sound? <laughs> like, everybody likes sixty nine. Yeah, no shit. So, all right. It's 95 So I was around 95. We released, we released You're in 1369. Cassette, yes. Yeah. And 1369 came up on my radar in about 2000. Yeah. We're still doing, I'm trying to remember, what we, we had some lineup changes. There's several drummers, a couple vocalists, same guitar players, me and Randy. And uh, around 2000, God, dog, Jesus Christ. So you're uh, young, and then you're still like 20 years I was, old. I was the, yeah, I was like a, 19, I was learning yeah. everything. Yeah, you know? greener and goose and now, shit. Now it's now it's flip. You know, I'm, now I now to, you're now the one teaching yeah, yeah. everybody. Well, yeah, I wouldn't say that, but you know. But I mean, okay. you have wisdom to impart. Yeah, like, yeah. so it's pretty wild how you know I'd eat all the all this shit, and but I was still learning. And I tell you what, I'm going back, I always thought, oh man, if you want to get your name out there, you got to have that best guitar player the best vocalist best drummer my ass dude nope so i tell you they got the worst they get you got all the fucking egos in the room oh my god dude just find guys you can get along with and like playing fucking music too and, and everybody will get better right i wish i'd have known that then but you know no shit but you know yeah, do man. things you know fuck you know trial by fire so 2000 yeah we released uh no oh, fuck sorry uh a cd Independently, two, 95 released one independently. Lost our drummer, and I think uh, 
things were going bad in 1369. So me and Scott Roberts, you remember him, redhead kid? That isn't that Aaron's brother. He has a sister named Aaron. Yeah, yeah. his dad I, was I for, his dad yeah, was a yeah. sheriff. I forgot deputy. you knew Aaron. Yes, yes, yes. yes I, I actually that was another factor of how you guys came into my radar because gotcha. we're friends. Gotcha. And she's Aaron. like, yeah, my brother plays in a band. She's like, I can't stand it, but you know, other oh, people like him. Oh, Aaron, dude, <laughs> she's great. She used to call me Crotch Rod. <laughs> I won't get started on her, but Thor's got her. She'd punch me in the face. But uh, oh, she no, was, she, she she's a good chick. She's, she's awesome. To, so she, I guess she was pretty Christian when, see, uh, so it was, what, year 2000? So I was around 22, 24. <clears throat> she, I think she's, how old is she? She's around 40? She's about my age, yeah. So she was around the same age, but I guess she was real... Uh, jesus kind of at the yeah, time yeah and I guess my foul mouth, and I was rubbing off on Scotty a little bit, <laughs> and she used to put a lighter... Underneath her hand, and say, like, "You're gonna burn, Tom." And dude, which is, that was hilarious. But anyway. well, also, she has a very dark sense of humor too. Yeah, like she yeah. is that girl. Yeah, she, I guess. she probably could have been doing that just to be kind he of might a shithead have both. to you. Yeah, yeah. might have both. Like she might have meant it, but at the same time, she's like, "You're gonna burn, Tom." <laughs> <laughs> so going through that, I was not original member of uh, 13, well, right. uh, 1369, and from what I hear, a lot of the people that. Dude, I've heard so many lineages of lineups of that. I honestly. Well, I'm don't. sure because of the comings and goings of different members. No, on 1369 has a hell of a pedigree. It, uh, Brandon Rodenberg, I think was the original drummer, and Carlos Ross was the original bass player. And I would, I would love to ask next time we see Carlos, uh, say, dude, who was the original lineup? So anyway, uh, we're playing as 1369, and we're starting to write stuff that's in the Blood Tribe catalog. It's a little bit more aggressive because you start changing members out. Yeah. You know, things. Well, plus your style came in. Well, it's like your things. Your playing style. I, I guess, you know, things start to change. Your playing style changed and the dynamic John of Kirk, that band. John Kirkwood starts out. He yeah. out a show. He says, I ain't a fucking original member in the motherfucker. I was like, yeah, well, fuck yourself. You know, I was like, <laughs> you know Kirkwood. what? I was like, you know what? He's fucking right. He's right. That's it. So, uh, we, uh, let's see. So, me and Clay, let's see, I forgot how it split. We lost Scott, and we lost our drummer, Sam Whitaker, at the time. Then Clay had seen a side project that me and Scotty was doing because things were going bad in 1369. So we started uh, another band. It was more like um, metalcore, which is which is good stuff, but, yeah. it's, but it's not in my... It's not your wheelhouse. Exactly. There you go. God, Clay loves he fucking the first time I heard said wheelhouse. He's like, What? I was like, That's it, you know, our 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 thing, dude, our wheelhouse. But anyway, uh so what Clay had seen us at a Living for Death show, which turned into Fervent Heat, and uh and uh Ryan, who's our vocalist at the time, seen I'm gonna say saw him at my restaurant I worked at and I think Clay was eighteen or nineteen. <laughs> and uh, he was a kid. Yeah. And uh I think it was the beginning of oh three of I think he tried out January 1st of 03. I'm not positive, but it was the beginning of January of 03. And uh, we said, man, we need to scratch the scratch 1369. And there was there, there was a lot of bad, uh, a lot of things that went south. A lot of, I would say, supernatural things that went awry <laughs> that certain members were into. Uh, that uh, I'll probably tell you off off <laughs> not not on the record and we needed to get rid of uh, some stigma yes and change it and start a whole new thing that is ours you know I wouldn't want to go call myself Bulldog Malenko band and you're not in the motherfucker you know what right because I mean? you know what I mean I started I like man they're weird I wasn't an original member I'm the only one you know it's changed the name but then again we that then people went to shows and three or four or five six hundred people would show up to shows you know and it's like people a lot of people knew that name I was like you know so we changed the name, and our first album release was called uh, "1369: The Death and Dying Chapters." Yep, I remember it's, that. It's about you know putting the name to rest and blah blah blah. So, <clears throat> so that was around from '03 to '05. Well, I'm sorry, '05. We wrote a, an album called uh, "Burning Darkness." Yep, that's the one that had "Bleed, Crawl, Cry." That is correct. Good job. Which yeah. I will, uh, I'll expand on here in a minute. You did. <clears throat> Hold did on. You I, 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 time you, out. You got up there with us live a couple of times, didn't you? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. 
Who didn't you get there live? I can't remember. I was singing. Son, I was almost your singer. Yeah, you but did, didn't yeah. you play live with us? Oh, though? of course. I thought you did. Absolutely. I'm getting old, dude. I'm forgetting. Uh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. So uh, several times. So that like Ryan, 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 Ryan Hux. <clears throat> I can't remember, dude. Yeah, Land Hux at Oxygen. Both Ryan. He'd like, want to take Ryan, and then Ryan left, and then Bart came in, yeah. and uh, both of them were more than happy to take a breather for five minutes <laughs> and worked. let then let me get up there and scream yeah. that shit. And it kind of blew people away to see me do vocals like that. That's and, cool. Yeah, and they were... If you remember, we'll go ahead and dive into this. Dive so, in. when I was doing the Hostile Takeover show, uh, right, like, actually, uh, no, it was before all that. Yeah. It was before. Um, so, you guys, that was the transition from Ryan to Bart. And before Bart came, I went out to the barn yeah. with you guys Boone out in Vegas. fucking Boonville. <laughs> yep. Isn't that Clay's house? or Clay's mm-hmm. parents. Yeah. We went out there, and at the time, Tom Fox was still in the Ah, uh, Thomas yeah. Fox. <clears throat> so it's you, Fox, and Clay, and you guys invited me to Just come. Just over on- Bleed Call Cry, is that what we went, went over? I can't remember. Yeah. Well, not only that, but you guys were, you guys were playing me an original a brand new original that had no words and I was just freestyle screaming over it. But if you remember, that was the first night in my life, the audition in that barn is when I learned, holy shit, I can scream. Really? No shit, man. You, you just wanted to try it. See and I'll, I'll never forget. Yeah, it was basically like I'd listened to the song over and over and I told you, I was like, this is the song I want to do when I come audition. I, in my head. Jeff Dahmer. It's hilarious. Yep. Uh, Yep. Uh, 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 uh. Or no, Ed Gain. What Blue Crawl Cry? Yeah. No, no, you're right. No, that was Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. yeah. Dahmer. Uh <clears throat> there was another one about Ed Gain. Yes. Yeah. Nine days. Yeah. The once my once my mother, now my lover. No, that's a, that's another one that Brian wrote about. Yeah. How did you know that? Brother, I know your fucking shit, man. Dude, the only reason because we played at uh, the Coliseum and Eric White had taped it. And we, <laughs> we never heard this is Clay. Dude, Clay is like his first show. He's like, dude, we're playing the Coliseum. And he's like, what? You know, I was like, but there's still like 100 people there. Right. It looked like there was four. Right. You know, but uh, if I think half of his kit, I want to say his hi-hat stand or his tom or something, had, like part of his kit fell off the riser. Oh, God, dog. But anyway, he had, Eric decided to tape it, and I guess we paid him money for him to, so we could hear what was what was live. But we could never really, we, the song was called, uh, that song was called, uh, What She Don't Know Can Hurt You. Yeah. And dude, he started talking about once my mother now my life. We heard it. Me and Cl- we played it back. Me and Chloe's like, "What in the fuck is he talking about?" Then he he was he wrote about this contraption. Uh, he, yeah. wanted, he wanted to tie this chick up by her arms and her legs, and had a shotgun. She had to pull herself up in her in her basically jigsaw her snatch. shit. From yeah, like saw, and yeah. she gives up. She blows a shotgun blast up her uh, her vagina. And I was like. I was like, bro, what the fuck's he into, man? <laughs> we, we, we just looked at he each was other a like, very odd guy, bro. Me and him. Hold on, hold on. We'll get into those. Okay. Things. So, hold, back up. We're in the barn. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. And I'll never forget. You guys fire up that fucking song, and as soon as I start growling, I'll never forget. You just looked at Fox and looked back at Clay, and Clay's eyes just shot big as baseballs, looking at you. And I was like. Uh oh, like, like I knew that it was a good look. Yeah, but I knew that I was just there to like, I wasn't actually auditioning. I was coming to see if I could do this, and then <clears throat> because I if, knew if you I, guys had some other guys lined which, up. Well, for I remember, I was like, I just we never got back to it. Is I wanted you to go listen to more and come back. Better yeah. Then I don't know what happened. After well, that. I because that's when I was starting to do. The hostile takeover, and I wasn't gonna have time. No, that's was, all good. Yeah, it, like I said, things <clears throat> things happen for a reason. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was so funny because I like as soon as I heard it coming out of my mouth, dude, through the fucking monitor, I'm like, that's me. Holy oh, shit! Yeah. I have a vicious fucking growl. Well, that's cool, dude. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so, and, uh, I, already so that, I already thought that you had it. No, that know. carried over to Paradigm and all nice. that, and yeah, man, it like if it had not been for Blood Tribe. I might have never 
try because that's not something I'm going to try on stage or in rehearsal with my actual band. It's not something they're expecting. Well, good for you to come out of your uh, comfort zone, right? Give them the old college try. <laughs> but well, that's awesome. another thing that stood out to me immediately was listening to that CD was one thing, and hearing the guitar mm. and everything sync up. But watching, like that, was the first time I'd really paid attention to you playing since religiously going through one of your albums oh, like just over and, and seen, over and seeing it play seeing it happen in front of me and i'm just like he's as precise yeah. i know you're gonna fucking blow it off because you you are re- you are very you're very humble in what you do but you were just as precise in that goddamn barn as you were on the album and i'm like I was almost distracted, and then when you guys pl- started playing the the new original that had no yeah. words, and I'm just freestyling. I like to know what the fuck that was. Yeah, right? How did it go, <laughs> man? You can't fucking remember. <laughs> I was I couldn't even do any vocals for like the first minute because I was mesmerized. I was like, "How the fuck does he do those transitions? Like I that's ridiculous." It. And you know, just like just like you come with lyrics and sing stuff. You know, I guess just whatever comes out of you. I guess I don't know. And then the, the, that's the the curse is though is a lot of people are trained, you know watch watch intro, but when I show them a new guitar player bass player, it's parts are like oh yeah it's the they're used it's to a scale just, it's a scale that Tom way. uses a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, they're it used is to, what it is. they're used to very like most musicians are used to very formulaic systematic layout. And if somebody were to come audition for you, I would like to sit there and watch that audition just to see the look on their face when they're like. I can't do that. Oh, Jesus. Geez. What is happening? Dude, it sounds like a fucking opera, bro. It's gangster. Hold on. I'm going <laughs> to... But she listen to gospel, bro? Uh, no. It's hot. So it's your roommate. Yeah. So. Well, she'd answer the door. I was like, am I at the right place? <laughs> yeah. And so... Yeah, with with the whole blood trap thing though. So then after my audition, it was like a week later that Bart hooks up with you guys. Yep. And I miss uh, that guy. Damn it, dude. He was such a funny. He was a great dude. He man. really was, man. Just uh, you know, you know uh, what always stands out to me. What's that? Come on. <laughs> I mean, dude. he he was literally he was a truck driver, dude, and he's... on the CB all day and. Dude, he was a nut, bro. He was. He was hilarious. He was a he was a total relief from what you guys had with Ryan. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I used to hear, which I won't talk about here, but I used to hear bad fucking juju stories about him <laughs> from other people that had been at your shows, like off stage stories, <laughs> and I'm like, like not even funny story, like that made me go really. And they're like, yeah, dude, he's not a good guy, and I'm like, fuck. Dude, that's uh, crazy. Let me turn this fucking camera around. Yeah, uh, <laughs> some of that, some of that stuff here. Um, it's uh, yeah, yeah. That's some of that I'll talk about. It's just rotate your device. <laughs> You're looking out. How you doing? <laughs> doing a a podcast slash interview with Bulldog. You want to give a yeah. shout out to it? Your your show's called the What's one. What's going on? Bulldog Unchained Podcast, the one on one sessions. Awesome. It'll be at uh would you say a week? It'll have it'll be up tonight. Later tonight. Yeah, tonight. Yeah. So we're just shooting some shit and talking about past and stuff like that. Yeah. Get into that blood tribe history. What, so what what we were we around? We were talking about uh around so what we gotta so think Bart, we were ta- oh, yeah, Bart Bart comes in, that's two thousand seven. Two thousand six. No. No. 2007 later, later. it's 2007 because 2007 is when i did the hostile takeover and that, he he was your guy that was uh it was around august july august september right wasn't around that, wasn't that cold what wasn't that cold when you came you came out because we're talking about the steelers and we were talking about willie parker parker yeah i remember that <laughs> Ju- Ju- what was his name he had a new june bug or am i drunk what was his nickname? Fast Willie Parker. But I, like, oh, he did have, like, something that his family and friends caught. I can't remember. Damn. Fuck, man, that was forever ago. But, yeah, so you guys, like, you get Bart. Bart is such a great fucking fit. He, well, 
He really was. He was entertaining. He's a bad dude. He's a great dude. As in good as well. Yeah. He was a great dude. <clears throat> Very, That's what, he was entertaining. Dude. Oh, man. I he beat you. the shit out of himself with that microphone. Dude, he's a fuck. Geez. He was a nut. Dude, I tell you what, man. That was uh, when, uh, yeah, he... Uh, when he passed, that was that was rough on on a lot of the members, man. Oh yeah, I've never dealt with uh, never dealt with suicide before. Yeah, and dude, I tell you, like the 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 blame of oh, what if I could have done this, I could have done this, and it's like fuck. But I talked to my my parents, and she, my mom had worked in a she worked in Stepping Stone and been a medical field her whole life, and she says, Tom, if someone wants to really kill themselves, they're gonna do it. You yeah. know what I mean, oh yeah. Hey, look, they're, man, they're I, do it. I brought it up in my introduction mm -hmm. to the one-on-one -on -one section. Is that you? What's a, oh, is it playing? What the fuck is happening, man? I don't know. That was hot, though. That was me. <laughs> I, was, I know. I was like, why am I hearing myself? We're time travelers. We're right? time travel. Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of mind of its own. So, we, we, yeah. What, what you um, yeah, I, I was just going to Remind me to tell you the Ryan story about serial killers when... Dude, it's like we yeah. should have took some Adderall before we started stay on track. <laughs> Dude. What were we talking about? I was saying, like, we were talking about Bart's suicide and oh, and God. how your mom told you that if somebody really wants to do it, they're going to do it. And no shit, man. Up until the middle of January, for about the three or four months prior to that, next Friday was going to be it for me. Oh, fuck. I man. was literally going to wait till my 40th birthday, let all that pass, and... Like, once everything... I was going to try to get a big party together, you know? To have a great last night with friends and maybe oh, create some memories and blah, blah, blah. And then come home and cash out. Well, let's not, let's not do that. Man. No, no, no. I, like, I, I talked about it in that introduction. And I was like, look, I'm, I'm not there anymore. Like, I'm, I'm in That's a good awesome. spot. But depression I, I said be, that... Yeah, depression's a, a motherfucker. motherfucker. It really is. And and I, I said it to, to, to make that point of... Man, a lot. Most people, when they hit that point, they're not looking to talk anymore. And I, I even made point. The, I made the emphasis of I made peace with that because of my life. Dude, the first the first fourteen years of my life were pure fucking terror, and I made peace with death a long goddamn time ago, almost in a welcoming fashion. Like I, I I'm not afraid to die. It doesn't like I'm. You know why? Because I'm not gonna know. Because I'm gonna be fucking dead. I it not going to affect me and <clears throat> it was you know I, I made that point of when people hit that point really hit that point like yeah there are signs and there were plenty of signs that some people caught on to and tried to reach out to me and I do appreciate them trying to reach out to me but at that point I pretty much made my mind up gotcha. already but yeah you can look for signs but a lot of the time man that's why people are like I I can't believe he or she did this, but probably because they didn't let you know anything like that was going on. And, Makes you wonder, dude. You know, people like us, we're not going to talk about our problems to. I try. Not, I try not now. to. I yeah, try exactly. You know, and that's it. And I've still. <laughs> I know people that I'm really, really close to. You know, <laughs> it's good to vent and get shit. It out, is. But. And I've studied psychology for 26 years, and and I know how to cope with these certain things. But eventually, it's not whether or not you can cope with it and it's not if you know how to cope with it eventually some people just hit a point where they don't want to anymore it's brutal coping and coping and coping eventually takes a toll on you and you're just like fuck it man i'm i'm tired i'm done and that's when people really got like a few people got concerned about me when i went when i made a couple facebook rants and at the end i was like i'm just i'm really tired and worn out and they knew that I didn't mean physically exhausted from work or whatever. Gotcha. Like, I'm tired and worn out. And gotcha. Like, That's what you're saying. My fight's going. Dude, if somebody tells you, like, I don't feel like I got much fight left in me, check on that motherfucker. That's, the, that's a key statement right there. Gotcha. If somebody says anything about they're tired, they're, they're worn, and you know that they're not talking about physically, dude, mental exhaustion will make people get into a headspace that they normally wouldn't be in. Or be good in. Yeah. Nobody's good in it. I know no. that people like to act like they might be, or, no. oh, this is comfortable, you know, this, I'm, this is what I'm used to. Uh, no, that's no. not natural. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna do some bad shit here soon. 
Damn, man. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally, I can connect with that very deeply. And yeah, no, there's nothing that any, like, like your mom told you, if somebody's going to do it, they're going to do it and there's nobody that's going to stop them. That's, yeah, she said, you know, you can think you can watch them take care of them, babysit them, but if someone really wants to do it, they're going to fucking do it. Think about this, Tom. You and I, we are both very strong, alpha type personalities, very independent. Imagine someone trying to take care of you because you're in a bad headspace. Probably much, make it even worse. It's going to make you feel like a bigger piece of shit. Make it even worse. Yep. Good way to look at it. Yep. Never thought of it like that. Like, we're not the kind of guys that can have a blanket wrapped around us. Maybe a blanket of semen. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I had to lighten it up real quick. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, lightening it up. You know, <laughs> like, Bart Bart was great. Oh, and then after, fuck. you know, after he goes, what was funny, when you got, you contacted me again. Fox is gone. Uh, and actually, <laughs> when I asked you, where'd he go? You were like, I don't really know. He just stopped showing up, and I was like, uh, yeah, "Oh, yeah. okay." okay. So we we got into it at the, at the <clears throat> studio, and I guess I was that. I'm, I, I guess I'm the reason for his his leaving, from what I hear. Well, I'm an to asshole. be fair, you're the general. Uh, I don't. Know. Well, you're the general. They call me the band dad. I guess. I'm, but I somebody's got to be. Otherwise, you got jackasses in a studio wasting time and money, not getting shit done. And if you're just fucking around, it's not going to sound right. And you know what it's supposed to be and the product and the brand that you want to put out to yeah. people. And you don't want it to be substandard. Trust me, I, I've, just, I've been through it. He decided to leave. So he was going to move to Denver. But uh, I think, I don't know if he went out there or not, but he... Uh, he uh, moved to Indy and he's got a degree. He's got a couple of kids. God damn. He's married. He's, he's doing good. That's awesome. So, um, that's but yeah, you, you got a hold of me again and you were like, hey, so I know that you're not in a band now. What would you think about doing Blood Tribe now? And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> no. Fuck. Now I'm old and I don't know. Fuck, yeah. I don't know if I can do that yeah, shit anymore. You but you said, if not, there's this kid named Gary Doolittle who wants to come audition, and as soon as you sent me that name, I know that I was the first motherfucker to tell you that's your guy. I had known Gary for years. Really? Oh yeah, me and Gary. I've known Gary a long time. That I've known him since he was a kid. Like that, he's a good dude. Man. He's he's fucking Mr. awesome, Mister Nice Guy. Isn't that fucking weird? Dude? There's a fight in your band for the nicest guy. <laughs> And it's a fight that can never be won because a punch would never be thrown. It's He's a so nice guy. We got to talk about how, like, first of all, when people hear this song at the end of this interview, they're going to be like, is he talking about people in this band? <laughs> and yes, yes, I am. Active, when you hear this song, these are the active members that I'm talking about. That is but correct. Gary, your singer, and Clay... Your drummer. Yeah, sounds, there's four different dudes. Dude, Clay, I'll never forget the first time that I saw you guys live. Where was that at? 1123. And I, <laughs> I'm talking to all of you after the show. And of course, all of you guys are kind of being swarmed by people. You know, there's people wanting to talk to you and people that you know that were mm -hmm. at shows regularly. Anyway, I walk up and I introduce myself to Clay I was like, hey, man, my name's Bulldog. And he goes, hi, I'm Clay. <laughs> and if, you, if you can picture from how I said that, the look on my face, a big eye, like his like his eyes got big, huge grin on his face. He shakes my hand. Oh, dude. And he's just the happiest. Well, dude, if, if you played a great show, man, you know you know what it's like. You play a good show. You're yeah. You're fucking pumped, dude. But still, he, we're talking about Blood Tribe here. Oh. And there's a mystique while you guys are on stage and that shit was ruined to fuck as soon as clay <laughs> shook my hand and opened his mouth to me and i was like is this a joke like i'm looking at him like is he fucking with me no like i'm looking at him through dude. squinty eyes judging no he was literally like the nicest kid i've ever He's met from a metal band and would do anything for anybody it's true and then now you've got Gary as your front man. It's crazy. And he's the same fucking guy. It's <laughs> the, the nice guys. 
Dude, we should fucking start a side man of the nice guys and just fucking. You can't be in that though. Well, you could oh, be their thanks. manager. <laughs> Shit. Damn. Band dad and the nice Singer. guys. There you Singer. go. Singer. Band dad and the nice Band-Dad guys. Band dad and the nice guys. Dude, I dig uh, it. You should do surf rock. We did. Oh god, I hate that shit. <laughs> um, uh, we ah. did do. I'll send it to you. I'll send you when I leave here. I remember. I'll go home. I'll send you some of this shit. But uh, we did a we did a shoot of. Uh, you, do you remember the Olin Mills pictures? Yes. Where it'll have like I, a picture. I, dude, I remember the goddamn picture. I've seen okay. it. Okay. Yes. Okay. And yeah. It, so we did some shit. It like made that. me laugh. We need so hard because aren't you wearing like a sweater vest? We all went to Goodwill. Yeah, and spent like a dollar or two. Well, not all, but some of us had some cheesy shit. But I did spent three dollars. And I think one of we had a cat, a yeah. couple cats. Yes, it was like Jesus Christ. It's ridiculous. It's like you know. Did we, you use it in an, in like album liner or as a, that was the plan? But we no. didn't. Maybe we'll re- recreate it. Bring it back. No, because it was it's, like you know we were trying to we were talking to a couple of independent labels. It's like. It's like, do you want to be real and have some really crazy fucking metal, but show that these guys are a bunch of fucking weird motherfuckers and are funny? You know, it's like, <laughs> but it, or you would be Mr. Fucking Badass. I fucking kill. Nobody's you know, allowed to smile. Exactly. On stage you know, so it's like, that, yeah, fuck that. So it's like have we fun. we were always on that. So we went with you know we'll just have regular pictures, but but then we put that out. I think we made a flyer out of it. I can't I can't remember what we did with it, <laughs> but that was I really think so. Matt was so all we'd have to do. We have a new basis now. Uh, well, he's been there for a little, a little over a year. Who is your bassist now? The guy name is Zach Equier. He's from uh, he's from down from around Nola. Right on. And he's a fucking badass. He's and crazy about Tell City. He's he resides in Tell City. <laughs> and uh, goddamn Warwick County kids, man. Well, this is this is Pat. This is oh yeah, Perry. That, that's Perry County. Perry yeah. County. It's Fuck. Pat Spencer and everything. But uh, hit him and his Jesus. dad have a studio called. I'm gonna plug it. Real I was quick. thinking Tennyson. That's what. I'm oh, okay. Thinking. Power Plant Studios. It's very, very stellar. Some bands are record there. We're gonna record there. His dad is the videographer and recorder guy for more music. So everything you see for more music. Wait, what's his name? Larry. Larry. Oh yeah, Larry was doing the thing tonight when Brett was introducing the his, new PRS line that's that his, they're getting. That's his dad. Holy shit! And so that's his studio where we rehearse at until right. Saturday. And on. dude, we walk in there. And I'm like, God, oh, dog, dude, this place is fucking sick. This is a real studio. This, and I won't say it for there's. I won't say who the band is, but uh, they did something there with some stuff and uh, from around here, and I saw part of it. and It's really fucking killer. So if there's any bands, local bands, that we record, you should either check out. Power Plant Studios, or if you want to stay in here in town, you can check out Matt Mag- Matt McGuire, Mig G. I know you know that guy. We he did our, did our last album, so um, Mick G. and I Good just dude. Uh, we just reconnected on Facebook. Good dude, and uh, Good we're G. gonna he's gonna come do the show. We're gonna bury the hatchet. That dude's we're a, gonna we're that dude's gonna, a great dude, very talented. Guy. Look, I tell very people, talented. I t- talented is one thing. I tell people flat out, he's one of the top five drummers I've ever seen he's in my good. life. He's a good guitar player. He's a good oh, song. Yeah. He's a good singer. Yep. Fuck, fuck. He can I do mean, it all. You know, fuck that guy. He's and, so talented. It's so funny because <laughs> he and I, the, and of course that's a decade ago. The Paradigm yeah, thing yeah. is a decade ago. I wish you guys would fire it up oh, again because Bud is going to be on here too. He needs to, limp dick. Yeah, I know, right? I miss his face, dude. <laughs> I love that motherfucker. He's a great dude. When, I, I know when Bud, He almost joined the band too. Really? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. We talked about that when I was in Paradigm. He was like, "I almost played guitar for them." I was like, That's "Jesus true. Christ!" That's true. He goes, "But I can't keep up with Tom." Oh bullshit! <laughs> That's horseshit. You guys are too nice. I appreciate it, dude. Like your your guitar, your guitar playing is it's it's weird to me. Like you will have some of the heaviest fucking riffs I've ever heard, and then all of a sudden. You're just playing beautiful shit in the background yeah. while somebody's screaming over, and I'm like, "Is he just playing melodic shit?" And then right back into a, I'm like, "Who fucking That's comes it. up with transitions like that?" I appreciate that. what in your brain makes you go, "Oh, this will work." Dude, Without that's the thing. Like, There's a lot of things we. It's like if it doesn't work, if it, we'll just play it until until it works, so, until it feels right. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Mister Spitgar. Uh, it happens. Nubsy fucking headbangs on that motherfucker every who's, week. Who's fucking Nubsy? Nubsy Slow. He's Nubsy, my. I don't know. This he's guy. a comedian. He's one of my co-hosts. Well, I need to meet this guy. Oh my god, you you'd love him. I need to have you on the regular show. I need to, you come in here with me, Tucker and Nubsy. You'll fucking laugh yourself stupid, and you'll get to say whatever. 
like we'll be talking about pop culture and what the fuck ever and cool. cracking jokes about everything perfect <laughs> I'd definitely like to when do you guys do it whenever you Sunday it, cool as long as, yeah. it, long as football's on, on. You know, we got time if it's on a, if it's during football season we start at 9 P.A. A.M.? A.M. Okay, yeah. I was going to say. We go 9 A.M. A.M., that's gangster, dude. Yeah, 9 A.M. to 10.30. Gives me time to finish up, get it uploaded, blah, blah, blah. Off to Pistons so to I watch know, the Steelers. I know you ain't missing the Steelers no. game for a podcast, bro. No. Speaking of that, what the fuck? A.B. supposedly going to be dealt tomorrow? Oh, Jesus. What is Whatever. your thoughts on get that? Get him dude? the fuck out, man. If he's going to be a locker room cancer. Well, what about we got... fucking Roethlis? Supposedly when the owner says he's hey, got 52 kids. Out. Right. Okay. Are you fucking? I mean, I get shit. it. Yeah, whatever. And it, it was it was uh, Kevin Colbert. It was Kevin Colbert, the uh, the scouting agent, who oh. said that. Oh, okay. I but, was the owner. No, no, no. But people, you know, people want to look at Ben a certain way, and I'm like, well, and then they want to come, like they want to talk about AB, and I'm like, well, that's great, but until he can be clutch when he's needed. When it's when the fucking life is on the line, he's pretty to, badass to go. But when it's on the line to go to the next week, or you're going home, or oh, when he didn't show up or practice or play, m- motherfucker. Dude, that's, it, well, that's not only that, up. but I mean, sorry, man, but Ben's won us two Super Bowls. It's true. So until he shows that he can no longer go, he's the man, not you. You're a guy that gets a ball thrown your way. And we've seen what happens when Ben's not there and someone else tries to step in and throw a ball to AB and it doesn't fucking get there. Batch and who's the other guy? No, 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 no. I ain't talking about Charlie Batch. Charlie the, the, Batch. Charlie what's Batch. He, what's, a, what's the last backup you had last year? No, this, yeah, that fucking. What was oh, his name? God, I can't even fucking remember. It's how Land, bad he was. There's an L. Landry there. Jones. Land, Landry Jones. Oh, God. He's, if that's the future, the future <laughs> is grim. <laughs> It is great. Ain't no wild how some of the drop off on or some of these players Oof. that are pros. And I'm, and that's just it. You've either got, I know that people think that, you know, somebody can be developed in a system, and that's just not true, man. Tom Brady had the talent when he came in, the same as he does now. Even though he was, what, a seventh round pick, fifth round pick, whatever. 266 he, or something. He had the goddamn talent already. Look at Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger comes in the second game of his rookie season. And almost won that game, but we were Who down. Was- Tommy Maddox. Did he get hurt, I guess? Remember, he goes down against Baltimore. We lose that game against Baltimore, but Roethlisberger threw for three touchdowns, I think, in that game. Then, for the rest of the season, we don't lose a fucking game. Where is this, 06? 2005. 05. Is that, where, is that the game where you went to no, Indy? That's, no, 2004. 2004 was Roethlisberger's first year. The next year, 2005, is when we got Willie Parker, and, and then in January 2000 or February 2006, we won the Super Bowl against the C- Seahawks. Seahawks. Yep, gotcha. Um, Lost against the Packers, right? Yeah, that was Maybe. 45. We won 40, and we won 43 against Arizona. That's right. That was a fucking two game. of the biggest plays in Super Bowl history happened in that same. Talk about the catch or the James Harrison Both. interception. That was that catch was that, stupid. The catch was that run ridic- was ridiculous. But, Jesus Christ! But James Harrison intercepting that ball, fucking ball on the goal line and that going a hundred yards right to end the half. Time. God damn! Because he gets tackled, there's no Yo, points. And you know? to, yeah, in and probably and maybe no title. You know? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, but. uh no, it's uh, fucking... Supposedly, I keep on hearing the Raiders. Uh, who gives... I don't care. Well, you should be able to get fucking a pick out of his ass. Oh, yeah. yeah we'll we'll something. get confident. Plus, it frees up a shit ton of cap space if he's gone before March 17th. We don't get hit with his bonus he's shit. A bad so. motherfucker, though, man. I mean, he is, but so was Terrell Owens. True. And look how much of a cancer he was. Fucking, he couldn't stay on a team more than, what, two, three years? What do you go after the Cowboys? Was the Bills first? Was it the Bills? What's the Eagles, Eagles, Cowboys, Eagles, Cowboys, Bills, Bengals? Yeah, dude, he was all over the fucking map. He and he fuck fucking it. shit talked his way out of the league. His bad <laughs> attitude got him the fuck out of the league. Like, how hard is it? Did you see Brown calling for fucking fat Blake Bortles when he's on the road? Who? They beat. He Call said who he, that? Uh, Roethlisberger. <laughs> he said he's fat, old, and rapey. That's the quote I read. Wow. Now, that was on Facebook, so I'm not saying it's true. But he says, uh, he said on the road, he doesn't do shit. He said on the road, it's like playing with the fat Blake Bortles. I about died, dude. I don't, wow. I don't know if he's trying to drive his stock down. I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, right? Like, 
if you're trying to get dealt to a team, I, I would think that you don't want teams to think that you're going to be cancerous. True. To, like if something doesn't go your way, now you're going to throw a fit. Well, we've already seen the Terrell Owens show, and it didn't end well for him. <sighs> God. Or the Chad Johnson show. Well, at least, dude, at least Chad Johnson was with fucking Cincy for how long? And, God, long and time. he ran his mouth constantly and True. would go out and back it up. And if he got humbled. But, hold on. Why, why did he? I forgot why he went to the Dolphins, though. Did he just he just opt I, out? I think, yeah. I think it was just. Headbutted his lady. Did he really? Headbutted in the face. Broken up. <laughs> He was cut the next day. Joel Feldman was on Hard Knocks oh, when they cut him. Oh, man. Damn. No matter. Whew. Wow. Headbutt. <laughs> Jesus. Cream hey. Hunt, dude. He's, he's a brown. Oh, that he's a brown. <laughs> and they got Nick Chubbs. Like, really? You really want to bring that in? Whatever, whatever dude. Whatever. It's Cleveland there, shit show. Anyway, let's get back to the music right. here. Sorry. So, what? So, now you've got... Uh, you got you, you got Clay. Uh, what's what's your basis name? Zach. Zach. Equia. What a great Equier. name, dude. Yeah, right. Equia. <laughs> I think. It's and you EC. got Gary. Gary. By the way, his name is. So you know, if we want to talk to him, we usually sw- flip the the little silly thing where you flip the letters of the the first and the last name, the first <laughs> ones. So Gary's name is Gary. Uh, Gary Keith. So. Am I fucking this up? Or oh, Doolittle. So Gary Doolittle. So we call him Dairy Goo. Dairy Goo Little. Or Dairy Teeth. So it's uh, where Dairy fucking. When I first heard Dairy Goo Little, I about fucking pissed myself, dude. So we see him call him Dairy. Or Teeth. Oh, God. Dairy Teeth. I haven't Goo-Little. seen him in years. He work, He's working at a uh, uh, plane in Tell City, working his dick into the bone. That sounds about right. Yeah. Fuck. So what's going on with you guys now? Right now, it's been a eighteen was a rough year. Uh, I won't go into eighteen it. was a rough year for a lot of bands. It's, around uh, here. it's we had uh, it's getting bad. A couple, let's I would say a couple, but a life threatening illness. We had some injuries. We had had some deaths in the family. Well, yeah, yeah, I know Clay had his and, thing uh, that he had to deal with. Yeah. And so it's like it was a, uh, it was it was it was weird. A lot of. Uh, some venues closing and shit. It was, it was weird. So we're hoping, and so we we released an album, but we're still waiting on a digital retailer, which we're in the middle of doing now. And we're currently writing a, another EP right now and trying to find some venues around here and starting to book right now as things are everybody yeah. everybody's healing up. But oh, Derek T's getting ready to have a child. Oh and shit! So uh, he's old enough to be a dad. That's oh my dude, weird. I think he's. Are you fucking kidding me? I think he's going to have his, his fourth. I think. Oh, God. What? I think. Oh, my God. I think it's crazy. One, I think. Yeah. Dairy T's spreading that love around, dude. <laughs> he's, apparently, he doesn't oh, go goo little. <laughs> he goos lots. He goos lots, all right. He dairy goos lots. <laughs> Sounds very German or Swedish. Dairy goo lot. <laughs> goos lots. <laughs> so we're writing and doing what we can and trying to, yeah. Get healthy and That's it's good, weird how man. it's weird how life will fucking change things or train you know throw a little curveball every now and then. Like it's funny because you know I can look back at the past twenty years of music scene here, and then I left and from two thousand one two thousand four. I lived in Vegas. Oh uh, four to oh five, I lived in St. Louis, and I came back home. I and, didn't know you lived in St. Louis. Yeah, and. That's why I went to the chunks of meat production gotcha. stuff. All those shows. Damn, I didn't there, know. Yeah. Was, I didn't know it was around back then. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. A bunch of shows there. Yeah, 2004. Man, I was going to see bands and shit. <laughs> a lot of cool venues there too. More it used to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, there were man. There were like a bunch of places to play then. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I, I look at like when I moved home in 2005. Goddamn, the music scene was. It had a steady pulse here. It really mm-hmm. did. Uh, there were a lot of active bands. There were, true. There were like five or six venues to play, yeah, including the Coliseum. They would have I know. different Not on Sundays. That was yeah. tight. I remember when Eric said, "Man, you do Coliseum." Uh, let me think. But yeah, like, fuck yeah, I want to play me. the fucking <laughs> yeah. Coliseum. I got this rig that I can, you know, light up Robert Stadium. Like, uh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Everywhere yes. else you play, it's on like four. Yeah. Or, <laughs> I'm or gonna get to crank this shit. Or up. lucky to have, you know, just not vocals, you know. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah. So Eric White, if you ever hear this, go ahead and try that out again, bro. 
No shit. <laughs> no, he's a good dude. Great sound man too. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, and then now I look at it, and you guys are pretty much the fucking last man standing of original well, bands some, you, here. Yeah, you can, like, there's some that have come in, to, but I mean, like the the longevity. Like, mm-hmm. Doof's gone, right? From from what I know, and that's a shame. They're good fucking. Yeah, band, deliverance Al- from Al- Alex. Alex is a great drummer, dude. Oh, I, fucking amazing! I know the guitar player and then, left, and, and I don't know Brent, what happened. Uh, the singer, dude. I I'll he see him was, at the gym from time to time. I haven't God. seen him in in a couple years now. He, I don't know. He was outstanding too. Like, yeah. I'll never Good forget. Thing. He ran, uh, <laughs> he ran the sound for my first show with Paradigm. Really we played at the Duck. Yeah, nice guy. And the now duck, you got to realize, fuck. I live right by there. I pass I, it, and I'm just like, man, I, it breaks my heart. Fuck, man. Yeah, uh, it was funny because Brent, like, I kind of had conflict with Doof from years, you know, doing the Hostile Takeover show because basically i'm the i'm the showrunner like i'm i'm the guy putting yeah. it on and doing everything and, you know we butted heads on a couple things about how the way things should be and i'm like look dude, like I, I appreciate that you guys have have played out and yeah you, you've gone to play but dude, I, like at that time I've, I've been to over 600 fucking shows like well not yeah. quite that many then but yeah i had a wealth of knowledge and i'm friends with all these touring bands I'm trying to create something to keep these hundreds of people gotcha. that I've brought in, keep them here and keep them coming back. Mm-hmm. And they just didn't see it because they, you know, I don't know if they were just used to the 40 or 50 or maybe a hundred crowd, but I've been to the duck in mm-hmm. like, okay, let me just tell you this story real quick. Paradigm. I'm singing with them, you know, yeah, we're, we're rehearsing. I write all the songs and then they tell me this is, Two months after I joined, hey, our first show's coming up in January. We're going to play the Duck Inn. I looked at McGuire and I was like, that place isn't big enough. Nice. And he goes, he goes, what do you mean? I was like, it, it, the Duck Inn is not big enough for the crowd that's going to be there. And he goes, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but <clears throat> this is original music in Evansville, blah, blah, blah. He did not know what had walked into his band. Butta had an idea because Butta had hung out with me outside of the band gotcha. and he saw how people we would just walk into a place and people bulldog what's up man? and i was a like a lot of people i was like dude you don't understand how many people are going to show the fuck up for this and there's going to be some pissed off people standing outside that can't get in <clears throat> and he was like he was like look man he was like really i appreciate your enthusiasm about it, but you know there's going to be maybe 100 people 150 people and i was like and there's going to be 400 people standing outside, extremely livid, like they're going to burn the goddamn building down. And I said, mark my words, before we ever get our equipment loaded into the building, it's going to be asshole to elbow. Nobody's going to be able to get to the bar to get a drink. And there's going to be people waiting outside on Pollock Avenue, pissed. We get there. An hour before the show, mm-hmm. the place is goddamn packed. And I walked in and I look at McG and I was like, Oh, there's not gonna be that many people here at the show. And he looked, just looked at me and smiled and he goes, All right. All right. He's like, I've grossly underestimated your draw. I was like, Dude, I told you, man. He's like, Those people outside are mad as fuck. But at least they were cool about it. It's January. Everybody froze their ass off Damn. and they opened the doors. So that yeah. everyone outside could still fucking hear it. Damn. Yeah, and it was it was insane. But Brent, you know, Brent came up to me after the show. From Doof? Yeah, from Doof. He's running our sound. And he was just like, bro, I had no idea that you could do that. He was like, that's, he was like, you were awesome. He was like, I can scream. He goes, but hearing you transition from singing to screaming that's always stuck with me all these years man it's 10 years ago and it's it's resonated that well it's cool that peers can you know hear that from your your peers yeah exactly and he was just like holy shit man like i'm really blown away by that and speaking of singing growling to singing have you ever band a new metal band out of uh czechoslovakia do you know what i'm talking about um ginger have you heard of them? Yes. 
That chick is fucking bad. Dude, yeah. Fuck, dude. She's Jesus awesome. Jesus Christ. There's another band that uh, somebody turned me on to, <laughs> Strawberry, turned me on to here recently, uh, <clears throat> called Nevermore. Are you fucking kidding me? You just now get I'm it? just now on this train, brother, dude, and I am along for the singer, fucking ride. That singer's been dead for a couple years. What? That world dane has been dead for a couple years. No. Oh, dude. N- no. They just did a show in... You California. said Nevermore? Pretty sure something's not. Hold on, something's not. Am I right not? Now. Am I not saying the right name? Fuck, dude. I'm probably saying the wrong fucking good. name. Jesus. I said never more. I gotta look it up. Fun. Hold on. I know I'm using the wrong name now. That's Fuck. Good. Nothing more. No, nothing I, more. No, I don't know. I don't it just. Know I, I didn't even gotta scroll to it. But so no, nothing more. Okay, I'll check it out. Where is it? Yep, nothing more. Dude, this song called Ripping Me Apart. Okay. Like, this dude can sing. Mm-hmm. Surely you've heard of uh, Johnny Craig. I've heard the name. Dance, man. Gavin, Dance. Oh, okay, Slay, no, I got you. Uh, Emerosa. Yeah. Very, like, he's a 125-pound little ginger kid. Yeah, what, how that works. And he's got the he's got the voice of like a fucking 300 pound black man it's weird and they they do post hardcore metal gotcha. and but he just sings beautifully over it. and then whenever he starts when he does the rasp oh it's just insane like his voice is beautiful granted he's had a lot he's like he's had personal issues with the drug thing and all that gotcha. but but i know him like i've met him and hung out with him a couple times and all right dude but yeah, this more. this nothing more. Cool. I'll I'll send it to you. Cool. Ripping me apart is just it caught me. I was like, holy shit! Sometimes that happens, dude. You're like, man, <clears throat> something new. You're like, wow, that's yeah, stellar. That's like I love introducing when I was talking about putting new music onto people's yes flash drives and stuff. I love hitting people whenever they say whenever I say I truly listen to all kinds of music. You know that I mean it. Because yeah. me and you are a lot alike in this. My playlist will literally go from Frank Sinatra to Ghetto Boys to goddamn <laughs> Threat Signal. Yours, like, is, yours is more it's eclectic. eclectic than mine. Like, oh, it's fucking crazy. And and then all of a sudden, fucking after Threat Signal, Elton John yeah, comes Elton on. John fucking yeah. rules, bro. Yeah. And then, fucking rules. Like, I also, like, uh, but I'll, I'll throw on bands. Like, if I say, you know, I'm going to put some metal on here. How metal is your metal? Yeah, that's a good point. And they're like, and I'm like, what do you consider bands like Metallica? Five finger. I say, what do you consider bands like Metallica, ACDC? Well, and if they go, oh, I consider them more hard rock. I'm like, then you're going to love the shit that I'm going gotcha. to give you. If they say that Metallica and AC, they're like, oh, they're metal as fuck. I'm like, okay, I we'll better go, what, I better we'll go easy happened. in the paint then because <laughs> this is going to upset your universe. <laughs> But I love hitting people with bands like Emure and uh, Breakdown of Sanity and people, Parkway Drive. A lot of people don't like Emure or Parkway Drive. I like them. Oh, oh. I like them. I think oh, it's God. awesome. That shit will make me ready to kill people. It's to the point. Breakdowns. Like, I when, fuck, I love it, when I hear Emure Demons with Ryu. Oh, yeah. the fuck is that broken? And then in the middle of, like, right when it gets to that breakdown, it goes, Sure you can Jesus oh, Christ! The first time I heard that, I was like, "When you when we used to work out together mm-hmm. at Planet Fitness, Emir and Breakdown of Sanity were the majority of my playlist." Yeah. If that shit doesn't make you want to fuck, it, it makes you feel like you're training to literally go rip people's heads off with your bare hands. I'd, I listen to all kinds of metal while on a bit. One of my favorites is, is just Hate Breed when working out. Dude, Jamie was he just fucking, what happened to those guys? Are they still? I, they're going to go tour with fucking Obituary and, Ooh, and that's and, an old throwback and, tour and Harm's Way and some other. You know who Obituary? Band. Like I know that they're nothing alike, but you know who Obituary makes me miss just because it's kind of that same general timeline for me. Like Obituary came early '90s, right? Oh yeah. But then into the later '90s, man, I miss Fear Factory. Oh yeah. And that's why I love dude, Threat Signal dude, is because that the dude from Fear Factory is the guy that produces. They're still them. doing shit. Fear Factory. I is. love them. Shit's good. Really I'll never. That's another band. The first time I heard the song "Edge Crusher," oh god, dude! Fuck! I, I, I that like was shock right before. Man. You're Edge right. Crusher's fucking. Yeah, I heard shock. Like somebody, one of my buddies, John Wynn. I'll give you a shout out, brother. He like he played this album for me and I heard shock, and I was like, "All right, 
Just the drums on the, it. Yeah, Jesus I was like, this Christ. is cool. But Edge Crusher, oh, yeah. when that... That's great. I was like... And then and then it and then it gets more subtle. He's like chaotic. I'm like, but that breaks. Oh. That makes the heavy part heavier. Yeah, break know? up the edge, yeah. Russia. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. And then oh, it's great what's song, funny dude. though, my favorite song from them is on that album track number five, Descend. Oh, and it's probably the lightest song. Yeah. But hearing him sing, like Burton. with his raspy voice in the in the fucking chorus. I love it. Like Fear that was dope, man. that was one of those first exposures that I had. That was probably ninety nine ish. One of the first exposures I had to. I mean, I'd had plenty with metal, like, but that first exposure to someone who could scream and sing, sing, sing. and I was like, "Ooh, this has got me." And then shortly thereafter, you've got bands coming out like. Uh, uh, Mudvayne oh, shows yeah. up. I wish they get back together, man. Fuck, great band, great the, band. I think that they were way way above the heads of the majority of their audience. Yeah, in in what they did. LD like, fifty was it, pretty oh. pretty bonkers. What's funny is, uh, Lost and Found is my favorite album. By really? the like for me, that's when you can just you hear the pure maturity. Yo, know, everything the hardness is still there. But then there's the maturity, like the lyrics yeah. that he wrote there. But his lyrics are dope on the first all, album, all too. Of, all of Holy them. All, shit. Yeah, dude. Even all of their albums lyrically are great. But that one, just the music and the, that album for me, I played, I pimped it on Facebook like a week or two ago. And I was like, this is one of those that few got albums. happy on it? Yep. Yeah, this is one of those few albums I can literally push play. And, and leave it the fuck alone. Because that that takes that says a lot. Because you think there's a lot of albums with a little bit of fluff. I got fluff very on few it, you know? albums yeah. in my Alice in Chains. Dirt. Oh, that's one of the best. That's probably their Dirt. best one. God damn! What a great great band. Oh, and then another one for me is uh, dude Clutch's last two albums, Psychic Warfare and The Book of Bad Decisions. I've heard them. It's a dope motherfuck, man. I'll it's, check it. They're badass they're one of your favorite bands aren't that's they? my favorite band it's tight, dude. like i people who have never heard them they're like who's clutch and i'm like pound for pound the baddest american rock band that's ever existed that and you know they used to be metal like you mm-hmm. and i we were around in the metal days of clutch first time i saw clutch was 90 three or four wow where are they from they're from maryland okay yeah um but yeah, and then they came here. Dude, I was so excited yep. when I saw that they were coming here with Pantera. Pantera. Oh, wow. I was like, oh my God. That's a wild lineup. Man. Oh, dude. And But then they were still metal. Yeah. But then, you know, as a, a few more years, they progressed back into that. They wanted to get into the American rock roots. And that's when Pure Rock Fury comes out and all yeah. that. And, and they really switched things up and... And then from there, they started going back more into the blues rock roots. And that's where they hit the sweet spot for me. And oh, that's dude, where they yeah. stayed. And like, that's their, that's their art, bro. That's what they, you know, and that's one of the few bands where you can look at and be like, wow, these motherfuckers have been together for over 30 years and it's the same four fucking guys. That's tough. That's huge. Yeah. And they all, and, st- and they and all fucking, still love each other like fucking, brothers, man. fucking it's, rare. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't Very happen. Rare. The egos. <laughs> and that's just it. Like, you know, Neil said in, in interviews, he's like, we got past the egos years ago. He's like, of course, when we were first coming up, yeah, there was a lot of butting of heads, but you got to spend time apart. And he said, that's one of the big problems. A lot of bands, when they first hit it big, right. they want to tour, 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 take a couple weeks off, tour, tour, tour. Burn out. He goes, that's how, yeah, that's how you get burnout, out. And that's how you hate the motherfuckers that you do this with. And he's like, literally clutch goes on break. Like, They'll go off of a tour. They will take two or three months and like maybe communicate through text or they might hang out a little bit, but it's back with the families and gotcha. stuff. And, and then they'll hit the studio. And when they hit the studio, they try not to rush it, apparently. And they want to make sure everything's well, you want it to be right. systematic, tight, and we're clutch brand. Plus, they own their own label now, so they're not under any constraints. No, de- no deadline. Yeah, they, they do it how they want to do it. And their formula, in my opinion... I think that 
every band i don't care what kind of music you play you should study what clutch does off stage and run your fucking formula the same way because hmm. it can only help you and a lot of wisdom <laughs> that's a lot like you know, that's a i lot. look at like, i look at me now if I could know what I know now, <laughs> 10 years ago, Paradigm would have blown the fuck up, man. Like, if me and McGuire could have gotten past being two goddamn fucking bull rams in a, in a, in a six by eight foot room, tr- constantly butting heads, fuck, it, it would yep. have been way different. Plus, you know, the level of commitment wasn't quite on my part i'll say you know it, oh, okay. it was lacking and you know now i having that wisdom if i could go back and be 30 years old again and doing this band there's nothing that would prevent it and now i'm gonna be 40 and i'm like i ain't got the fucking energy Fuck it, to dude. do that shit anymore. do whatever you want to do bro oh my god this is my passion what we're doing right here well, that's right cool now. though that's i feel cool. like yeah okay look i know do both, bro. Oh, fuck off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like I, I uh, no. <laughs> I I love singing. I love the reaction that I get from singing. I'll never forget how I felt. Yeah, I think it was our third show. We opened for Skindred. And it was, was our third, third show. show. And we didn't have anything recorded yet. But people had been to our first two shows. And all of the, the lyrics. And all of a sudden, dude, I'm singing. And I hear part of the crowd screaming oh, that's... up at me. And I'm like, what are they? Like, it distracted me. And I was like, what are they yelling at me? And I that's stopped singing cool. for a second. And the song continued. I turned around to look at McG or to turn around from the crowd because I was like, fuck, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry <laughs> like a fucking bitch on stage. Mr. Badass. Yeah, exactly. Like 900-pound gorilla intimidating at the front <laughs> of the stage. Tenderheart bear. Oh, my out. God, dude. But, these people were Teddy singing. Ruxpin. They were singing words that I wrote. Oh yeah, and that's one of those. I'm, even though I had aspirations of being in a band that would tour the world, mm-hmm. I never that for whatever reason that never even had a seat in my mind of someone knowing your words. Of, uh, yeah, of people in the crowd singing my lyrics at me. It's tight, dude. and I was like. How, first of all, how the, you've heard these songs twice. How do you know any of it? How do you know any of these songs? Guess it was catchy enough, I guess. It's crazy. It fucking... and, and legible to hear. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> compared, compared to some BT. <laughs> I mean, if you, you better have the, the blood li- drive, yeah, you better have, have that some booklet lyrics, out. bro. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what's, it, what's he saying? <laughs> Did he just say fuck a cat? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me some funny stories. Like, Ryan right. and the serial So Ryan, Give Ryan me has a f- affinity, a obsession. A lot of people do. Well, bro, with serial killers. Yeah. And dude, I, I, I like some serial killers as much as the next metalhead, I guess. But he was bro, into oh, it. Bro, fuck. All right. So anyway, me and Ryan live in this house with this girl named Tracy, who's a roommate. And oh, you lived with Ryan. Oh, f- Jesus Christ! Oh, I don't shit. know how many fucking times. Oh God, the stories it's I crazy. Can tell you. Um, but anyway, this chick, she moved in for a while, and Ryan and her, dude, they fucking hate. Oh my, hated each other. <laughs> and dude, I always thought Ryan could be a fucking killer. We all we all start talking because the shit. That's you, what I was saying. With all your lyrics and you always, yeah, dude, it's like. You know what I mean? So, you know. Yeah, granted, it's art, but you put a lot of put, yourself into your put art. Your, spread your legs around your pussy. Don't let the hammer fall. Your body's too something to be splattered across the wall. That was from that same time. I was yep. like, God damn, you're not my mother wants my lover. Where the fuck he said? I just looked at Clay. I'm like, bro. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, like, I want to be metal, but not that metal. So, this girl, our roommate, disappears. She leaves her. She. She doesn't come home, hasn't been at work. Her boyfriend calls, her mom calls, can't find her. Three days, day three, I sit Ryan down. I said, Ryan. I said, I said I'm fucking serious. I said, because they got in a fight, and then she got a big argument, and then she, she left, or, or something. She disappeared. No one can, Her parents are looking for her. 
Still? And this chick. Or? Yeah, this chick. No, no. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. I'm okay. even more I'm metal. I'm like, oh, God. That, what the fuck? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I, I look at God, Ryan. Damn. I look at Ryan. I said, dude, did you fucking do anything? Did you fucking do anything with Tracy to hurt her? He said, do you think I fucking killed? I should quit dropping her name. He said, do you think I fucking killed her? And I was like, and he starts laughing. I said, yeah. The thoughts crossed my mind. Just the point that I fucking thought he fucking fucking erased her dude but she found she left her boyfriend and found some other dude disappear for like three or four days and but uh yeah I was just like Ryan did you fucking kill our roommate dude I mean I was fucking serious <laughs> it, I didn't put past him dude but anyway yeah it was, oh fuck yeah dude it was, it was pretty heavy but what she just took off for a couple she took days off and... some new dude and came back oh, like, so her boyfriend was looking for her too. But... yeah <laughs> she had some new ding dong <laughs> <laughs> and I was like Ryan you know, because like, he's like, "Do you really think?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" He's like, <laughs> "He's like, oh my god, Jesus!" <laughs> but you're obsessed with fucking Erica. You know, I don't know. You know, they don't mean anything. You know, I like jacking off. It doesn't mean we'll go out and be a bukkake fucking <laughs> professional. You know, I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> I know you well enough. Uh, That's in your wheelhouse. We'll throw right that word out there. The tug house. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, uh god. Give me some, uh, give me some more entertaining stories oh, Lord. of travels of Blood Tribe. Like, okay. there's got to be a couple that oh, just yeah. stick just, out. Just like, I want to, I don't want to put too much stuff. So I guess I'll do some. Oh fuck so, it, man! Some of the one on me because I don't, you know, I don't want fuck that. Remember. Throw the members under the bus. <laughs> um, it's Bulldog. They'll understand. So, well, maybe Zach won't because we haven't met. But, but Clay and Gary will get it. They'll be like, "Fuck it, Bulldog." Shall we throw you under the bus too? I'll tell you a little one about Gary. We're leaving a gig. Uh, we're leaving Cincinnati at Bogarts, and we take nice. t- we take turns driving. And as uh, I drove there, and uh, some people want to drink, so they won't drive. So I say, Gary, your shift is up. I'm driving home, and this motherfucker, dude, he he's probably the one that drove the van the least. He we're going. Uh, there's a one way to turn left. I said, dude, take a left to get it on 71 or whatever it was to get over to Kentucky. This mo- I said, turn left. This motherfucker turns right down a one-way street. <laughs> About, I don't know, 9,000 cars coming at us. And we're in a soccer dad van. Uh, Fucking half of us hammered. And dude, it's blah, 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 blah. I'm like, bro. I said, Fucking turn left. You know, you think if you... It's nighttime. You see a bunch of headlights. headlights coming at you. Yeah, don't go that way. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> so yeah, he, he he didn't drive a whole lot after that. Uh, <laughs> and I got a problem. I don't know if I get nervous or I got a bad diet. I like to eat a lot of spicy food, but I have a lot of sh- a lot of ass problems on the road, bro. <laughs> big time, big time. I uh, I'll, I'll man, this is kind of incriminating. You know? Do it. Maybe, maybe I'll say a mild, mild story. Um, <laughs> Fuck that. We were, uh, damn it. <laughs> so we're going up to Terrell to play a gig, and I was, I had ate something I shouldn't eat. It's usually, Indi- usually it's Indian food, which I fucking love, but it usually comes back to haunt me. But, uh, and I had to stop like every, I don't know, 30, 40 miles to, blow it up and I'll usually still now will take toilet paper even I'll go and eat road trip personal road trip to <laughs> roll toilet paper yep. so you never know when you're going to have to hit that off, uh, off you the know, side you of the start, road you start, with, yeah. you start thinking about it you're like oh god you know some shit you can't hold back you know well anyway I'm Clay's driving and uh, he does not show you where he's at in Terre Haute and I, I've already jumped out his fall and had a, a bright neon work shirt on before I worked in the fall, so I go to these patch of woods between the the middle of the highway, or one side of that 41 and another side of like an alternate 41. And uh, I think that, and Josh Kerchief is in is in the band at the time. He pulls his his fucking video camera out, and he's he and uh, it's like dusk, six o'clock, five o'clock. You can see and dude, these cars going by, and I'm just spraying fucking fecal matter with this bright like neon yellow shirt. So I'm blowing it up, blah blah blah. So anyway, I get back in, and I'm, I'm kind of weird. I'm not the cleanest person, but what what comes to shit, dude? I gotta wash my hands. There's no soap. I didn't prepare for it, so I'm like, God damn it. So anyway, we're about 
Then Josh says, Josh says, dude, you could have waited another mile. There's a gas station right there, but I didn't tell you. <laughs> so we passed the fucking gas station after I blew it up. Anyway, so we get into Terre Haute, and the dude, it hits me again. I'm like, bro, it's been 20 minutes. I said, Clay, this, this round is worse, bro. I said, Clay, you got to pull over. We're on 41. He's in left hand lane. All these, a mil- we're on the strip. There's a million businesses on the right. I said, bro, turn left. Turn. What, where do I turn? It's Clay, turn, turn. I said, I'm going to fucking shit my pants in your truck. Fucking turn. I'm being a complete dick to you. Know, I'm getting ready to fucking blow some hot diarrhea out. So I go into a. Uh, dude, I hit, Mc- I hit the McDonald's door. <laughs> It's where McDonald's do, and I'm telling you, I got my pants pulled on just enough to cover my junk. They're already out because I know the time. The time is short. I get in. The fuse was lit, dude. I get into the bathroom. I get into the bathroom. I go to the the last stall. I don't know why. I go to the last one when I didn't have time. I pull my pants down, and I did. I didn't make it. I. As I, as I pulled the sh- my, well, I kind of made. Well, not really. I, as I pulled my pants down, I tried to swivel to get my ass on the seat. It fucking exploded, bro. It was like uh, it was like one of those two liters that you puff up and just, dude. I fucking spray shit on the floor. On the, it was like a diagonal, diagonal thing. So anyway, I hear my other members come in to take a piss. <laughs> And uh, I said, uh, I said, guys, is it you two? Because I don't want because I had my Johnson. Because I was I before I had sat down, I already spray shit all over the toilet. So I'm sitting, I'm sitting in my own shit. So I was just like, so I was like, oh, this not not just the the, the shit on the floor or the ceiling or the wall. I was like, oh, I'm sitting in my own shit. That's just gross. So I said, I got out of my little ding dong tuck because it just shriveled up to all hell with these liquid shit. And I go to the next stall. I said, guys, oh. they said, what are you doing? I said, bro, I didn't make it. Go look at that last stall. <laughs> and I go, oh, my God. So as as I'm in there, just I'm trying to get it all out before this gig. I'm trying to just get it fucking all out. You know, this kid walks in with a, a mop bucket or something and says, I ain't fucking cleaning it. Fuck this. And supposedly he, he's, I'm going to quit or something. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'll, wash my, I'll, wash, I'll wash my hands and. Left a bunch of times and played the gig. And oh my there's god! There's a lot of shit stories with me, dude. I probably sh- I'm gonna say shit on the side of the road, 18, 19 states. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That that is fucking out, dude. I don't know what it is. I need to get it figured out. I don't know what it is. Maybe just see some. I don't know. I don't know. I need to get it worked out. Though. Oh my god! It's annoying. I don't know how many pairs of socks or boxers I've lost on the road. <laughs> it is what it is. True story. Damn it. Blood Tribes, probably sponsored by Haynes. Dude, I'm the only one that has that problem. I'm the only, I don't know, man. I need to get something checked out, bro. Oh, my God. Spicy food. I like spicy food. Me too. So, But, it, but it, now, it, as I got older, like, if I know I'm going to travel the next day, I'm like, nope. No <laughs> yeah. hot sauce. We got to no. wait. <laughs> nope. It's like, damn it. Yeah. Well, that's like, uh, I know if I have to drive any distance greater than 30 minutes no taco bell dude i don't know what that nope. is that'll, that'll light me up dude yeah. sometimes like i'll get taco bell i'll bring it home and eat it <laughs> and then there it goes right but i'm not rolling those dice i literally shit it my sucks. pants i shit what? my pants driving home one time dude i dude i shit but my, i was also sick but oh dude i've had food poison a couple of times i shit myself oh god it's like you didn't even shit it just anal leakage how hot is it that it looks like piss how hot is that it's like what is wrong with me how's my asshole just leak out shit maybe that should have been more on the podcast anyway whatever it is oh hilarious. my god that's great. josh was my bass player at the time and i'd shit myself and he was in a in a truck and, he, and, uh, he, and I said, he said, get in the truck bed. I'd, it's like 10 degrees. <laughs> My shitty, crusty ass is right in the back of his truck bed. True story. True story. Oh, my God. So, my problems are shit stories, dude, on the road. That's awesome. I made sure I went before I appreciate I came, you uh, sharing that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's great. Then on the way from home, Terre Haute, Clay's wife was with us. 
and I had to shit. I'm driving the blazer. <laughs> this is I don't. I, this is another trip, and uh, this is before uh, phones. So we had a map. Oh yeah. And I said, bro. And I said, you know, I said, dude. <clears throat> the Atlas play, book. Grab a grab a state. And said, what state? And I said, we'll never play fucking Hawaii. Rip out Hawaii, dude. I saw we ripped Hawaii. Wipe my ass out. She was dying laughing, dude. Oh, dude. Dying. Rip out of state. I said, rip out of Hawaii. We're never playing that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. oh, man. So that's my problems on the road. Usually. That's fantastic, man. I'm, I'm glad you like it. Oh, yeah. We could share. I mean, I was glad I was could share that. Yeah. To <laughs> shit metal. Hot fecal matter. <laughs> that is the most metal thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, it sounds... <laughs> the Indian food gets me. Damn. Oh, fuck. I love it, though. Have you not had Indian food? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit's great, dude. Yeah. Fuck. A lot of people say, it looks like cat bomb. It, it, it does. I don't give a shit. It's delicious. Fuck yeah, it is, dude. It's like, I also love Greek food, but man, it dude, will fucking... It will grease my every insides. Every time I've been to... Every time I've been to Acropolis, it, I haven't been impressed for some reason. Nah, it's... You gotta realize, I lived in Vegas. Gotcha. And, Probably had some yeah, more some legit, legit set of, set of Americanized. Yeah. Gotcha. Like, like one of my buddies, he owned a little mall kiosk called Kiklos, and his name is Sophocles. And that's metal. Yeah, dude. He and he was cool as fuck, man. Like tattooed up and fucking Jeez. just cool as shit, man. He like his food was legit. Like it was a mall, and he constantly do. There was a line like to get his Jesus. food. It, yeah. Yep. It's dope. Yep. It's crazy shit. Uh, yeah. Well, fuck, man. Is there anything else you want to throw out there? Bro, you, you're fucking this goat. You tell me, bro. <laughs> there, this is your goat to fuck. Yeah, no shit. There, you know, there's I just of, own the goat. I'm, prete- I'm presenting it to you. I'll, I'll pull out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, there'll be more music coming. We'll release, uh, release a new album on a digital retailer soon. And uh, be playing out more, writing more. Awesome. And there's a lot of new bands that are coming, coming, uh, coming out too. So around here, so that's good. So hopefully we can get some more. Hopefully there can be a reignition of the scene. Yeah. Well, hopefully we need we need some places to play. Yeah. Because the only place I know of right now are house shows, Mesker, Wired, TJ Stockyard is another one, but I've never played there. Yeah. Um, and that's all I know. And I know Docs is pretty much from my herd not gonna. So, this is what it is. Yep. But I don't know, man. I, I can open. put you in touch with him. Oh, I, I got mean, I got his info, but I haven't, yeah. haven't uh, just yeah. pitch it to him. Man. Worst the worst thing he says is no, yeah, and exactly, you're in the same yeah. goddamn location exactly. you are now. Fuck exactly. Me. <laughs> yeah. Don't bother me, none shit. No, but you know, being a musician, how many doors are slammed in your face? Yep. You no know, big deal, dude. I do this show and doors get slammed in my yeah. face <laughs> you fail a lot bro that's part I of it I mean considering my main show starts with you are the motherfucking antichrist well a lot of people stop listening right there <laughs> if uh, I keep you past that yeah, alright you're you're my crowd weed it out yep you know exactly I know that my show isn't for everybody but it's for a lot of people that's true man it's your shit and that's the thing you know so it makes you happy dude yeah man Tom I appreciate you coming in here, being my first fucking guest for this. I appreciate this it, is, man. This has been a blast. Definitely. So, have me on one of your. Uh, oh yeah, I'll definitely have you come be on know. the main show. Yeah, it, let me know, dude. It'll be ridiculous. We talk all kinds of shit. Oh yeah, I love it. So, uh, everybody listening, this has been Tom Wilder from Blood Tribe. Thanks for hanging out, my buddy. And uh, thanks for having me. Much yeah, appreciated. man. And uh, be sure to stick around after the little closing intro. You're gonna hear "Ritual" by Blood Tribe. Uh, I dig the fuck out of that song, man. Like no joke. It's, Whenever you sent it to me, I was in my work truck just jamming it over and over. I was yeah. like, dude, this is badass. It's uh, the song. The the full title is <laughs> uh, it's a we released a three song EP, two original songs and one cover, and uh, it's about uh, the full title is "Ritual Burning." It's about right on the ritual is. I guess it's basically, you know, pretty much comes down to worshiping the devil while smoking weed. So there you are. 
Smoke meth, uh, beat whores, hell Satan. Well, there's there's another song that we might we have a title, but I won't say it. We'll that, that should be the title: Smoke meth, beat whores, hell Satan. It's similar, <laughs> kind of. So that's yeah. my life motto. <laughs> I'm the fattest meth head on the planet. Yes, it said that. That's some before we get off that. If that you can Google right now that Evansville per capita or Evansville is the, is meth, the capital meth capital of the world. Yes. Why is there so many fucking rotund people? And, here? and That's the only thing now we've is. become like we are the meth capital of the world, and we're number three in. Op- well, actually, I think Vanderbilt County now is number one in opioid in the U.S. Well, at least we're striving for something, right? But how's there so many fucking obese I, people right, in but India? But we're That's also we're stuff. also the most obese area Jesus of the country. I, I contribute to that. I'm fine with it. We whatever. all do, bro. But anyway, thanks for uh, having me on. And there is, this was great. I fucking... I had a good time. Dude. Yeah, awesome. this, this was awesome. So, uh, I am the king of villains, Bulldog Malenko. This is the Bulldog Unchained podcast, one-on-one sessions. And uh, this has been Tom Wilder in here with me. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. And uh, again, stick around after the little closing outro, and you'll hear Ritual Burning by Blood Tribe. Later. Later. Later.